<clears throat> Hello. Oh, I was, I was doing my Summit cosplay before uh, we were started. I forgot. Hello. What's up, guys? Welcome to Classic Cast uh, Season 2, Episode 2. I am here with Stay Safe and Asmongold, who is uh, on his own stream right now. I just told him we're, uh, we're getting started, and I, I figured we'd go ahead and uh, start, make sure we're good to go with him. Uh, you can see him talking, talking he, about mounts or whatever he's yeah, doing. Yeah, I think he's stuck in a rant about mounts. <laughs> um, yeah, he's stuck in Asmongold. Hey, we're... Um, the links are in the wrong place. Oh, no, this is uh, this is Asmongold, and this is Stay Safe. That's what's happening. So uh, let's go ahead and flip those yes, as well. Yes, I am, I am Asmongold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, uh, Stay Safe stuck in a rant. So, uh, guys, good to see you guys. <laughs> uh, we are here for Classic Cast Season 2, Episode 2. Very, very excited. Uh, it is... A very exciting day for a lot of us because I think a lot of people are, are thinking that it's it's probably beta day. Uh, definitely here in the next um, uh, could be could be definitely definitely this week could in the be. next few days. So um, yeah, we are uh, we're very excited to talk about it, and that's going to be the main focal point of today's today's show. So uh, I bet uh, I bet one of my mods a hundred gifted subs that it's going to come out today. He has to gift me a hundred, or if it doesn't, if it doesn't come out this week, then I have to gift a hundred to a channel of his choice. So we're talking Amaran, hello, like that. Hello, hello. hey, what's up, dude? We got audio, Hi. we got we got video. It looks like everything's working. Good, we got okay, we got this set up awesome. here. So Let me go uh, ahead and set mine up real quick. Uh, yeah, should be good here. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I, I was basically, you know, we were, we were just starting the show and. Um, kind of talking about what the focal point of today's show is going to be and it's what's on I everybody's mind is tvc beta uh I, yes. I think a lot of people think it's going to happen here in the next couple of days uh either today tomorrow i, I don't do you guys know i don't know no do you guys have uh, the details i'm gonna be honest i don't think blizzard knows uh, even if they think they know, they probably don't because there's probably a lot going on behind the scenes where they're just not really sure exactly how things are going to go. And that's probably why they are. Uh, that's probably why they don't put a date out for it. I remember whenever they put a date out for the classic release, I was actually really surprised about that. Do you guys remember that? Yeah, yeah I feel yeah, like yeah. I feel like the I feel like them doing that was a product of, hey, this is a big launch and we yeah. need to make sure people know. Because what happened with that is we had uh, myself, Stay Safe, and Tips actually got invited out to go like test it before yeah. it released like a week earlier, and we had to sign an NDA and we couldn't say anything. We so were under NDA, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, we didn't get an NDA or anything like that this time. So uh, I don't know. I think uh, I, I think it's probably going to be something that's not so much of an issue. Is uh, them like just waiting on an NDA or anything like that? I think it's just going to be they're going to release it just like they do every other. Uh, Shadowlands beta and stuff like that because I don't Part think of they think yeah. they give like a 24-hour notice, right? So if it comes out tomorrow, they'd tell us today kind of situation, don't you think? I would hope so. Like I'd hope yeah. to have a 24-hour notice because I remember yesterday So we were doing the show and Yesterday just out of nowhere people were able to download the beta. I don't know if you guys saw that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, It's like so as and I were doing this event and it was literally, I, I took a break and I was hearing people are downloading the, the PTR, the, the beta for for TBC. And I was freaking out. I was like, oh my, what am I going to do? What should I do? Should I log on, play all night? Like, I didn't know how to handle it. And uh, yeah, it turned like, out that was a false alarm. <laughs> do, we yeah, need, exactly. do we need to get a second PC and just set it up at my house? Yeah. Comes over? Cancel the $600,000 exactly. charity. Event? <laughs> yeah, 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 half the charity. We're going home. But uh, <laughs> no, no. We have to play video games. <laughs> It was great though. Yeah. The, the charity event was awesome. I mean, the last couple of days yeah. for um, I, I think for everybody involved, right? Like OTK community and uh, yeah. everything. In case you guys weren't watching, it, why why I'm clean shaven? I, I clean shave mm -hmm. for the charity. It was one of the charity goals. So um, raised six hundred thousand uh, dollars because of you guys. Wait, I, I didn't watch. How much did it cost to get you to shave? Uh, it was it was the six hundred thousand dollar goal. It was the most. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. It was the highest tier. Okay. Um, that's why we reached it because everybody just really wanted to see that happen <laughs> yeah yeah well I, actually what what really look, happened look was thanks it's uh it was a lower goal and we ended up changing it because asmin stream popped the hell off and I, I, that blew everybody's expectations out of the water so we're like okay well yep. let's just put some of let's let's put more asmin's goals on like while he's on his stream let's do that and then we'll just wait and we'll do it as the first goal on my stream so yeah uh yeah it ended up being 400k but uh no it was great it was awesome uh all that stuff went great and now we're just ready for 
TBC beta, and there's a lot to talk about, especially with this news from yesterday. I think yesterday yeah. we, we uh, like you said, Asman, like we got the news and it was just like, okay, you know, what now? They're talking about potential store mounts and uh, there's, there's the beta is live. The beta is not live. It's a bug. People who already had it downloaded. So mm -hmm. uh, we are definitely going to get into the mount thing. And um, actually, let's go ahead and lead off with that because that's spicy. Well, first, first the mount thing? Out. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. We'll say go ahead, it go was ahead. an accident. It was an accident that this got put on the launcher. I actually never, I yeah. was sleeping when this happened, so I never saw it or downloaded it, but it was a mistake. And then with the mistake, people data mine, there was a mount on the mount shop, right? That's what happened. Mm -hmm. okay. um, no, it was, it was cool. I think these were actually two separate things where actually, maybe, maybe you could be right. Maybe you could be right about that. But they, it was data mined. The mount was data mined from the Burning Crusade server and not from a shadowland server so it was it, it's in the game files somewhere in the burning crusade client yeah so it was it was data mined from a client that i guess wasn't supposed to be pushed or it was yeah. supposed to be pushed and it was pushed early and we don't really know the difference uh mm -hmm. i i think either way this is something that like a, from a community perspective and and even myself it just doesn't really make a lot of sense right it's not something that really fits in line with what classic is and all that. And we can, we can really delve into it, but, um, just, well, to, dude, to... you know, you know who I've seen, I've looked in the forums, you know, who's the most mad about this mount are Shadowlands players that are mad. Maybe TBC players are going to have a cool mount to buy. <laughs> I noticed that too. That they're not going to wow, get it in Shadowlands. Yeah. I, I was yeah, like, no, trust me. If there's a way for Blizzard to maximize their store mount profit, they will do it. There's no yes. way they're not going to yeah, right. make it available right. for everybody. Let's be honest. Yeah, I, I think. Uh, well, I got to ask with Classic, was there any yeah. bonus in retail for getting 60 in Classic or anything like that? Mm -hmm. Like you hit 60 in vanilla and then you get a retail uh, pet? I thought or, they had there something. I, wasn't there something that you got? Didn't you get like a boost in the Shadowlands or BFA? Or no. That actually, I, it didn't happen. Okay. No, it didn't happen because There's nothing. There's they wanted to do, there was like rumors okay. about something like that, but I think that yeah. actually didn't happen. It was a, you know it was what? a rumor. I think it happened people on the were... Chinese servers. I think it was in oh. China it happened. Oh, maybe. maybe it did. I'm not sure. In China, like they're they have a totally different team in China. I think a lot of people don't know that. So yeah, something happens in China and people think it's coming to NA servers, and and that's not necessarily the case. Um, well, they have a completely different culture, even too. Yeah, yeah. like it's it's just how they how yeah. they do gaming and and everything. Um, let's ask Summit. Summit, what do you think? Uh, no, for, for real though, yeah. I um, I think that with the with the the whole idea of doing something cross this this was actually something that happened early on a lot of people talked about that and it's why no changes yeah. even became a thing was people wanted to they were going so far one way with it that the whole no changes thing was super far the other way because people were talking about transmog uh some sort of cross yeah. uh retail classic stuff where it's like okay you get an item in retail and then or in classic and then it goes to your retail transmog and it's like okay well what about these items that aren't in the game anymore sure i get that people want that but it, it kind of hurts the exclusivity and why those are such a special item for transmog and all that stuff um they they took a pretty hard stance against that or the community did and, and blizzard kind of they, they agreed and they were like yeah that, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense now they have addressed that there are things that need to be changed and and that's something that now people i think understand you kind of have to account for the times or even make changes to account for other changes that they just have to make or the thing the way things have developed in the in the future or i guess now well, i think that a lot of it was kind of like the argument that they had with uh it was the argument they had with the boosts because the boosts were obviously different. I turned my camera off. My camera keeps dying over and over. It is like the boosts were kind of the reason mm -hmm. why people are okay with it is because there are so many mage boosters in the game. And because there's so many mage boosters in the game, what ends up happening is that the idea of leveling up your character legitimately in classic WoW just isn't a thing anymore. Right. It's mm -hmm. just not the case. So I think that's a huge reason why a lot of people were okay with the boost but the funny thing about the no changes thing is that even the people that were hashtag some changes for classic wow store mounts weren't one of them yeah i think the store yeah, mount right. thing is, is a and real this issue is not anybody's idea of what the game is supposed to be well and i think one of the biggest problems with store mounts and, and you touched on it yeah. is blizzard's not going to stop maximizing their profits right There's activision no is not going to stop maximizing their profits and people are inevitably yeah of course they're going to buy something right like mm -hmm. i might not buy it you might not buy it there's going to be people out there that are, oh, cool mount, they're going to buy it. And 
now you have this thing where if they have this um, sort of positive feedback, which the only real positive feedback there is, is it's, they're looking at their wallets. They're just going to start littering the game with, with store mounts and stuff. And it just it starts the snowball process. And I don't, I, I'm, I I'm not big should. on the slippery slope thing. I just want to finish this one thing. Like, I, I'm not big mm. on just slippery slope because I think, I mean, it, it's a fallacy and, and all that, like all, all that stuff aside. I think it's more of a snowball effect of they're going to be like, yeah, this is totally worth and they're just going to do more. So sorry, Stacey, they should ahead. they should accelerate. They should sell a ton more mounts. They should f sell seventy boosts, level seventy boosts. They should sell tokens, and then you know, like ten years from now, we can get classic, classic, classic. Yeah, and uh, then we can just start over without it. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's just going to be the cycle over and over and over. Yeah, uh, I don't understand why why they thought this was a good idea, and I think that there are a lot of people in the community like I've. I've read some threads about it and pretty much everybody is universally against this. Yeah. It's not like there's a lot of people who are okay with the idea of a mount in the game. Do you guys think that there's a way that if there's enough community negative feedback that they'll take it out or not um, do it? Or is this just a reality that we have to live with? I think you know, interesting enough, Blizzard Blizzard has listened to some of the requests from the classic player base. I don't know about Shadowlands, yeah. but you know, the the whole drum meta thing. People are like, yo. This is stupid. After 15 years of TBC on private servers and whatever, we know this is dumb. We don't want this. And then Blizzard fixed it. And that's sort of the sum changes thing. So, but, you know, the drum thing isn't making Blizzard money. So the right. mount is that's the 58 the boost. They're, ma the they're making Blizzard money. So they're probably less inclined to get rid of yeah. this stuff because it would uh, decrease their bottom line yeah. or whatever, you know. Hey, real quick, just to, to go ahead and get out of the way, Asmin, if you want to switch to your other camera and just set up the virtual cam for the other camera and let your, your, your main camera charge, and then you can continue the rest of the stream with your main camera instead of worrying about flipping it on and off. Do you want to do that? Yeah, I don't know what to do. I I, I don't remember how to do it. It's like a filter thing. It, it's going to be a huge pain in the ass. I worry about that happening. I, I can I try think, and do it while we're, while okay. we're fixing it. Just though. like, I, I think yeah. that would just be less stressful just to get it out of the way now. And, and okay. I, I personally, I don't mind. It's it's totally fine. Uh, Yeah, I mean, I've just got to kind of find out where it is and everything. It's going to probably take me a while for this to yeah. happen, though. So, well, uh, here, here. Go ahead and do this. Right click, right click on your camera filters. Yeah, I've already got virtual cam. It's set up. Okay. There and then we just, go. just stop it and then start it on the other one. So make sure to stop it on the main cam first. Um, on the okay. Filter on the Let me try and do that. And I'll just give you guys my other camera. That way, if it dies, it'll be okay. Yeah. And then you just, you just let your current camera charge. Okay. Let me see if I can do that. Okay. Uh, turn on camera, OBS virtual camera. Uh, is that going to work? No, it looks like it's not working. Uh, no, no, not OBS virtual camera. <laughs> not, yeah, I, no, I went through all of them, though. Like, this is the only one that works. Uh, no, no, well, this is, this is how you would do it, is uh, click on your current camera, filters. I already did that. Yeah, I think I have to restart everything if I want to do that. I, I don't want to restart everything. I can yeah. just turn it off, off and on. It's not a big deal. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, that's fine. Uh, so anyway, as we were saying, eh, yeah. <laughs> as we were saying, yeah. I'm, so I haven't really looked at the mount that much. I'm actually watching Asm stream here and he just has it up in the background. The mount is like yeah. way more high res than other mounts in TBC. It would look really weird in TBC. And I think people are appropriately angry over it being added. But I mean, it's one of yeah. those things we don't even know for a fact if it's going to be in TBC. It, this could be some mm -hmm. retail mount or promotional mount. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I, I don't think it should be in TBC. Yeah, it's called the, uh, for those of you guys who don't know, if you haven't seen it, we, we have it loaded up here. It's um, the Viridian Face Hunter, right? Yeah. And it's, uh, I, I do think it has, like, it's a little bit higher res, but, you know, they, they've done a lot of stuff to where uh, the, the current models, if you look at the current game versus the old game, it's going to be, I, I think the current game looks a lot nicer. Like, they definitely use, like, uh, uh, it's not 100% the same exact models as before, and I do think yeah. this would fit. I mean, they even have it in Shatrath here. There's a screenshot of it. But that's Wowhead probably loaded it up in there on like a private server or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. I really, I, I really don't know how this is going to pan out. But I, I hope this isn't, you know, it, it might start out as, hey, it's something for a classic collector's edition. Because apparently there were some, some rumors about them adding a, a special mount for a collector's edition. And the question is, is it really going to stop there? Uh, I will tell you this. I don't think Sorry, so. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I was going to say, this might be a hot take. If I mm -hmm. had to choose between the 58 boost and a, and a mount on a mount shop for TBC, I'd choose the mount. The 58 boost, like, 
in-game economic impact, player player experience, I think the boost is, is functionally worse than the mount. The economic impact is definitely worse than the right. mount. I mean, yeah. the mount is ultimately a cosmetic. This is clearly, like, in my opinion, like, I'm a big one for cosmetics. And if, like, if bots can 58 boost, it's way worse. It's definitely yeah, way yeah. worse. Well, and, uh, and uh, just the fact that you can go straight yeah. to 58 and get through some of the level requirements for professions. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, the gold farming, the bots... You could easily, yeah. it's, it's very pay to win because you're going to be able to pay for new accounts. You get one boost per account, sure, but people, they're going to spend the money and they're going to get multiple accounts and they're just going to- You don't have to, to buy anything. You just pay this, you just pay the sub. Yeah, That's exactly. And it's it's literally, it's going to be like a factory. It's like you're owning a factory on your battle account. <laughs> it's like, yeah. yep. Yep. It, it's going to be, it's going to be completely ridiculous. I've, I've said it before. I think, I, I do actually understand why they want to add a boost or something for new players to come in or for players who played Burning Crusade and Burning Crusade was like, that was their game and they didn't play classic and all that stuff. But there's two things to think about here. Yeah. One, they nerfed leveling really hard in uh, in Burning Crusade from one to 60. They made it much easier level. Yeah. So it is gonna be faster. Like a lot easier. Yeah. yeah. And the second thing to think about is, didn't they add in recruit a friend and all this stuff in Burning Crusade? In, in late TPC, yeah. In late TPC yeah. they did. So why not make it a, an XP boost or something like that? Why not bring back the recruit a friend program? I think that'd be fantastic. I think the way they should have done it, because you're right, whenever TBC prepatch comes out, like the XP required from, I think it's 20 to 60 is nerfed by 20%. I think that's how it is. Current mm -hmm. quests reward more XP and they add new, they add new quests, yeah. new quest hubs. And so leveling is way easier. And so I think at BlizzCon line, they should have said, you know what, if you want to get into TBC, you didn't play classic, but you care about TBC, pre-patch is the time to do it. It's going to be two months. It's easier to level. There's going to be Dren eyes and Blood Elves running around. That that should have been the selling point for getting new players back in the game or new players in the game in the first place and not the 58 boost. Yeah. Now, I feel like the boost is the worst way for it to happen. Like the boost is just, it's the... It's the worst possible outcome. I'm just gonna leave my camera off for like five minutes and see if that helps. Yeah, so. I, think, I think that's fine. Just whatever, it's whatever so is. Fun. Yeah, don't, like, don't worry I, about I, it. I, yeah, I, 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 I don't anyway, think we care. It's fine. So uh, th the fact is, like, the boost is basically the worst possible out option because I do think that having a mage boost you in dungeons is infinitely better than literally paying Blizzard real life money to increase the level of your character. Like there's right. no interaction that occurs. There's no economic impact of this. There's nothing that like even having mages that ha having mages that exist in the game that will boost you for different things creates an economy that gold has value for. And right. I think that's one of the big things that Blizzard over time has lost the perspective of is the way that these different things, these different things in the economy, especially in like vanilla WoW and BC affect other things in the economy and drive value right completely agree i i think because how many videos have you seen on youtube of the most expensive items in gaming or whatever and then they, they attach a real value to an item and this is just one more thing yeah. that does that right and that's that's more so um and it's accurate it is accurate and and uh, more so to emphasize your point on that right like Mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, this is something that is it's not good. Level 58 boost is not good. I think an XP boost is a very good compromise. I think they should bring back the Recruit a Friend program. I think regardless, I think give them the XP boost because there's going to be a lot of new players who maybe they don't have friends and they can't recruit a friend. That's fine. Uh, give them the opportunity to get like, I don't know, and you can make it massive. You can make it as much as three times, four times XP for, yeah. uh, for up to level 60. I think that'd be great. Or maybe up to level 58. That'd be fine. I have no problem with that. But at least people have to spend the time. Now, here's the argument that you can make. Yeah. At least you have to play the game. And at least the world isn't dead. People are like, oh, well, what about mage boosters and stuff? Well, mage boosting, yeah. mages have an AOE cap that's put in on Burning Crusade. So mage boosting is probably going to be dead in pre-patch. It's and not then, as good. It's not as good. It's not dead, dead, but it's not as good. And then yeah. paladin boosting remains supreme and everybody should play a prop paladin and then everything is saved. Yeah, there it is. So yes, all, all joking aside, all joking aside, I, I think that uh, this is something that even if mage boosting is a thing, like you have to know somebody to boost, you have to pay for a boost and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I, I think that there's going to be new players to the game and having them learn to play their class. Think about this. How many times have you played the game with somebody who is a boosted in retail over the last however many years since they added the boost? You start playing a game and you queue up for a, for a random LFG, whatever. You're trying to do your daily. 
and it's just a moron who has no idea what his abilities do. It's not hard. I get it. Well, but it's also, it's not his fault either. It's like, not his fault I'll either. So, so then they get a bad taste in their mouth because they're like, this community is toxic and they hate me, but they hate me because they're, it's, it's so bad. It's, I think it's a really bad new player experience. The leveling process is like a tutorial. And I would agree. I think leveling in classic takes a long time. Some would argue maybe even too long. I, I think so too. I think leveling in classic is pretty slow, but it's not a bad leveling experience because you have a constant series of little wins and you you feel the progression and you get better and better every time. Right? Well, like the leveling right experience time. is it's only too long. I think the leveling experience in classic is only too long if you view it as a means to an end and not right. actually the game itself. Because right. the idea of Classic WoW was that you play through the game and it's not like you, you don't win the game whenever you hit 60 or anything like that. You just unlock other content. But because right now, gamers are so much more goal-oriented than they were back whenever Classic came out, that's the only thing people can think of. Well, right. Another thing that contributes to people like not enjoying the current leveling experience of questing yeah. normally and running around killing mobs is because in the back of their head, they know, ah, uh, I could do this, which takes like 10 days slash played, or I could buy some gold yeah. on a third party site and get boosted in AFK and watch Netflix in two days or three days slash played. Mm -hmm. So it's that comparison because you can't blame WoW players for wanting to min max. And so having that other option there that's way faster, it makes your like actual accomplishments of playing the game and leveling up feel way worse, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I also think the World of Warcraft player base right now, it has this sort of like defeatist mentality when it comes to classic where it's like, oh, there's bots everywhere and people are AFK in dungeons getting mage boosted. So who cares if Blizzard adds a 50 boost? It's like, well, let's try Just to like up. fix the current issues yeah. rather than making things way worse, you know? Yeah, 100%. I would agree. I would definitely agree. I think that's absolutely what's happened is that I think it's sad that a lot of the arguments for being okay with the classic boost are basically just things that are bad about classic and people just accepting it just like okay there's going to be bots there's going to be this mage boosting and who cares how much worse it gets it's yeah. disappointing but at the end of the day i think the only way that any of this stuff is ever going to change is if like everybody doesn't like it and the problem is like retail wow has definitely conditioned players into being more okay with microtransactions and i think gaming in general has and I can't really see there being enough of an outcry of people that don't want this in TBC because realistically, how many people are actually going to not play TBC because of this mount? And yeah, like none. that's, yeah, it, it's, it's an unfortunate reality, but Blizzard is going to take advantage of it and manipulate it because they just want more money. I mean, look, look at the way that they run the company. They, they fire I mean, like yeah and they, 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 well, they have a very big like market analysis team that looks at like okay how shameless can yeah. we get before it's no longer profitable for us you know so it's like okay we might lose some subs but the current people who keep playing and buy them out makes it more worthwhile so it's you know screw them whatever yeah yeah I, that's I, that's exactly what it is yeah I, I think it's uh this is something that kind of went under the radar but blizzard did more layoffs last week it was two weeks ago yeah and, and yeah, I didn't hear about that. Can no, I get a, do, it, it, do you guys know the details? I don't know too many don't details, have, but, but fired 50 people. I, I know it was 50 probably. people, and I think it was like okay. some things are like I understand that it's a business and you're, they're letting certain things go. Like I think it was like mm -hmm. some event stuff and all that, and I know that Corona and stuff is going on. But Corona, it's, it's, maybe this is wishful thinking, but I think Corona is going to be over by the end of the year, or at least mostly over. So why are you getting rid of the event people at the end of the pandemic? And then, you know, I don't, I, it probably will be. Yeah. I mean, I think that for the most part, by that time, like many, many people will have the vaccine. So it will be much less of an issue. Yeah, over. Right. Uh, yeah. The I, quote. I mean, it's definitely going to be a lot less than it is now. I think any reasonable yeah. person would assume that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, it seems like Blizzard, they, this is like kind of what I felt like with Blizzard in general is that they've definitely moved away from being kind of like that really cool. Uh, you know, gamer place, and they've definitely transitioned more into just being a company. Yeah. Because at the same time that this happened, uh, Bobby Kotick, who's like the CEO, got a two hundred million dollar bonus, like two hundred million dollars. <laughs> that, that's insane. Yeah. Like I can't even imagine that much money. Yeah. And yeah. that's where we're at. So I can't really see these kinds of things changing. And I also think that that's probably the way that Twitch does things too. I don't want to derail the conversation too much. Yeah, but oh, they this, clearly this will turn into a whole thing. I, no, I agree. Yeah, they clearly probably look at the analytics and they see how many people are actually not watching because of ads. 
And because they're seeing that few people actually leaving because of ads, they just keep pushing more ads because as much as people say, oh, I'm not going to watch this anymore. I'm not going to go on Twitch anymore. It doesn't actually happen. They yeah. still keep on the website and they just keep complaining about it. And I think that's what happens with with WoW, with like these mounts. Now, maybe you can see an effect 10 years down the line, like compared to retail WoW and you look at the store and how uh, extravagant it is now versus before. But now it's just, it's a completely different thing. I think right. that probably Classic WoW ended up being way more successful than they had expected. And they have a lot of regret over not monetizing it more. And so they're like, you know what? We're not going to make that mistake again. TBC, we're mm -hmm. cashing out, you know? Oh, well, well, I talked to somebody at TwitchCon last year, a month after Classic yeah. came out. I talked to somebody at TwitchCon who worked at Blizzard, and he, you know, I, I got a chance to talk to him for a little bit, and he was like, let me tell you about Classic. Like, their expectation, they had, like, tiers. There was, if, if it was going to go well, they were, like, right here. If it was going to completely blow their expectation out of the water, it was going to be right here. If it went bad down here and they were like okay it's not the end of the world we got it out we did the thing you know people are happy yeah. at least move on where it ended up being he said it just completely shattered it wasn't even remotely close to what they thought and the the fact that they started out with four servers initially and now they have i i don't even know the total server count for uh for classic wow right now they just were constantly adding servers and that whole debacle yeah of the the pre pre names and the testing and okay let's let's mm -hmm. see what happens layering is we we are fully confident that layering is going to be over by the end of phase one and then we're halfway into phase two and they're like uh sorry we there's no way we can there's you can't you won't be able to play the game without layering and then they they get rid of it and then they bring it back and the the game was from a standpoint from their perspective was wildly successful. And, and I think a lot of people would agree. Um, yeah. Now we, we go on and, and we bitch and we rant and we, we even like, I think to, to our own fault, like I think all three of us do this. We get a little bit preachy t at times about things that we're unhappy with, with classic. And that's just because we expect so much, right? Uh, it, it's, it is a good game and all that stuff. And we have experienced it in a different way than it's been brought back to us. And that's why. And we just kind of expect that it's like, you guys know how to do this. Like all the information is out there. Just do it right. So um, that's really what I think the, the big hope is with Burning Crusade. Uh, I want to lead that into talking about them doing pre-nerf content. Some things that they're doing differently from original classic. And uh, we did, we did kind of talk about this again on the, uh, on, on the last episode. We just brought classic cast back. So uh, on the last episode, we talked about this with tips, but they want to do pre-nerf content because one of the biggest things they learned, and this is something that uh, uh, we, we've been very vocal about, Stasev and I were, were, again, getting kind of preachy about this, but having the end game post-nerf content on top of having stronger characters from class balance, 1.12 talents and, and skills, and then stronger gear from 1.12 talents and skills, you're taking the goalpost yeah. and you're moving it this way here and then this way here, and the content is too easy and the characters are too strong. And it just ended up being, while I, I, I think I've been very vocal about this, WoW is not a super, classic WoW is not a super mechanically difficult game. It's a game that's difficult in terms of preparation and really knowledge. You got to know like what you got to do at certain times, but it's not mechanically oh, yeah. difficult. And uh, there's times where you can just straight up ignore mechanics. And there's fights in WoW that people don't even know have mechanics because everybody was so strong that we just blew right through it early on. Nax is different. Yeah. I think Nax was perfect. But guess what? The entirety of the game was based around the Nax patch. So um, I think Nax is a really good difficulty. And here's like I'm going to talk about this more in a second. But the problem with Nax is how cost prohibitive it is. Like consumes are so expensive. Like it's so it's insane, if, you, if you could just go in and do the raid and not have to get a full world bus and full consumes, oh, it'd be great. Like it'd be so good. But um, let me ask guys this: Do you do you think that? I'm, this is going to sound crazy, okay? I'm worried that pre-nerf TBC content is going to be actually... I'm not saying it's hard. I'm saying it's going to be too... Ugh, dude, this is going to sound so dumb. I'm afraid it might be so difficult it'll turn people away from TBC because I think one of the reasons why people like classic content is because it's completely face roll, your brain is off, yes. you can kick back some beers with the boys and relax. I think it is you know? a very so different... I'm, yeah. I'm afraid being okay. in, 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 a, in a progression rate, even if it's only for a couple days or a week, where you're progressing on this boss and TBC, I'm afraid for classic players that actually might be too much of, a, of an effort for them, if that makes sense. I would agree with you if it was in Classic WoW, because in Classic WoW, the amount of prep, like what you're talking about, is so gigantic that 
if you have to spend a bunch of a bunch of gold every single time that you wipe, it's just completely soul crushing. It's like yeah. if you wipe yeah. in Nax Ramis halfway through the raid and you still haven't done the military wing, you've got to do four horsemen without world buffs, and a lot of people aren't going to redo their elixirs. You're in for a bad time. It's going to take forever. You're going to have to be, you know, really thinking about it and paying attention. Whereas, like, whenever you have world buffs, you can just basically kick back, fuck around, and do what you want, especially mm -hmm. for the other raids. Like, Nax is still pretty hard, but the other ones are, are not. So the truth is that I agree with Stay Safe. I think that, yeah, if, if they bring out pre-nerf Gruul and you have the shatter that will one-shot you if you get hit by anybody else's shatter, then, yeah, you might actually have some people that are going to quit the game because of that. I think... I, Sorry, go ahead. Now, to, to add on to your point, you know, you're yeah, definitely yeah. right. In PBC, wiping is, it's like, oh, we wipe whatever, we'll go again. You it's know? whatever, yeah. Your, your yeah. consumes keep ticking, it's you don't lose world buffs. So. Exactly, yeah. I think, uh, I don't think it's going to be too hard. I think, uh, I think it's going to be more difficult. And mm -hmm. yes, inevitably, there's going to be some people that it, the game might be too hard for them. But the fact that the wipes aren't as demoralizing, it's really, you're losing time as a, you're losing, you're actually losing less time from wiping because the time you lose whenever, hey, if, if you did want to have a raid, not all raids require this, but you have raids that, okay, we're going to get our world buffs, this and that, and then you wipe, then it's like, oh, I lost all the time of preparing for the raid. Like I, before my, you know, I have like, this is how we do it in Crusade. It's a, it's a four hour, like we call it like, it's a raid time, but it's really like a guild activity time where you know, we, we might do one raid, two raids, people will leave and they'll do ZG or whatever uh, after after they're done. Yeah, I, like, yeah. Our, like we clear an axe in four hours in my raid, but we have other raids that do it much faster than that just because the, the different raids, like they want to do different things. Um, in, in Burning Crusade, you are not going to have this thing where you're going into it completely. We don't know what's going on. Even in Classic, we didn't have that, but most of our knowledge is on private yeah. servers. There's a ton of Burning Crusade videos. There's there's mm -hmm. a there's a PVP video I'm in. I remember whenever I, f I first started streaming on Twitch and somebody came into my chat and goes, is this the S fan from Rifle Love and 12? And I thought he was making a Ron Jeremy joke because I had my mustache. That's like <laughs> I didn't even I thought it was a porno. Yeah. I couldn't remember. And, and I go and I look up Rifle Love and 12 and I ended stream. No, I looked up Rifle Love and 12 and uh, it's it's a PVP video that I was in. Mm -hmm from 12 years ago where uh, i'm in at the end of the pv video and i i guess i'd forgotten about it oh. and uh the guy he put me in at the end of the video like out of people that he lost to in duels and it was like me and like a few other ones and it was just cool and i was like holy crap oh, that's cool yeah so it's like you see my character and i'm running around and it was it was a total like it was a total trip for me i do i i never and i started to remember who it was the guy's name was rifle lover is a dwarf hunter pretty cool um I had the same thing happen one time. I just randomly find myself. I, somebody told me that they saw. They asked me if I was in a guild called Silent Asylum, and I was like, "Yeah, I was." And they're like, uh, "I think you're in this random PvP video from Burning Crusade from like eight years ago, and or not eight years ago, like fifteen years ago." Yeah. So I looked at it, and that was actually me. And the best part about it is, it was my warrior in like full tier four gear and the gladiator gear. I had just gotten my gore howl. I had berserking Ooh. and I was in Warsong Gold. I killed like three people, man. I was so uh, happy. It wasn't just like me dying to like a hunter pet or something stupid like that. But I was actually popping off in that video. Yeah, that's awesome. It's just cool. Yeah, like, dude, I was in a video where I, I like 1v10 to like 10 people. <laughs> yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. No, I, remember, I, I saw that one. Yeah. I, yeah that, was, that was the one where you 1v10 the people and then, and then you went back and while we were drinking, like, 16 cheerleaders showed up and just started like yeah, giving him consumed and Cowboys yeah, I, I it was totally like, wild yeah. yeah you had to like pay for his flying mount and you know you could do that because you, you just have so much gold it was easy for you yeah yeah those are the days man those were the days oh man but yeah. no i mean i i think it, it's cool to have that kind of stuff and uh, obviously the pre-nerf bosses are they're really not that hard i think that if classic taught people anything is that the idea of the difficulty of the bosses is much different than the reality of the difficulty of the bosses mm -hmm. and i think on a very fundamental level and this isn't something that can be changed with numbers on a very fundamental level the bosses are easy like they have right. very little mechanics the frequency of the mechanics is very low um there are just fewer things that can go wrong each individual player has less of an influence on the outcome of the raid. The damage checks are smaller. And actually, well, besides that, all the other ones that I mentioned before that, these are all just actual fundamental game mechanics. 
-hmm. It's not like this is something that's going to get changed by increasing its health or whatever. You'd have to completely redesign the fight. Yeah. So I believe that overall, the fights are going to be a lot easier than what we see in retail WoW, but they're going to be a massive step up in difficulty versus what we see in Classic now. It's going to be, I'd say, half again harder than Max. Probably the same difficulty jump from, let's say, BWL with like, you know, you have 16 debuff slots, etc., BWL to Nax in terms of difficulty is going to be the same jump that Nax is going to have to like tier five. I think tier five is where things are going to really get hard. Gruel, I think, is just planning, but tier five is where things get real. Well, yeah, I mean, so in Classic right now, how many bosses are there where there is individual player responsibility where you can wipe the raid if you do something wrong, uh, like uh, on an individual basis? Classic There's like three or five. Three or There's not that many, yeah. It's Baron well, Geddon with the bomb. Right. It's like Thaddeus. It's Vale. There's mm -hmm. not a lot. In TBC, like just about every boss has one of those mechanics where it's like, yeah, these people have to be awake. They have to have a pulse and you have to pay attention at least a little bit, right? Yeah, there's a lot more. I think that, Classic least. WoW, one of those mechanics is just like aggro. So like, for example, Shazra, if you pull aggro on Shazra and he runs towards the casters sure. and he starts yeah. uh, exploding them, then yeah, I think that would count. But overall, you're right. There's much more personal responsibility that's levied on players in bc versus vanilla and i think the best example of that obviously is Terran gorefiend where you have to become the ghost and, mm. and kill the ghost that are running towards the boss but there's plenty of other examples too with like lady vosh with the tainted core i mean i think some people still have their macro of the tainted Dude. core and I, I had hot, my uh, pot potato with that thing yeah so yeah and, and that kind of stuff like Obviously, that's going to be a huge step up in difficulty versus what we have right now in Classic. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I saw think a post. you will see, you will, I was going to say, I think you will see guilds that were Classic WoW guilds that were pretty good fall apart in TBC, 100%. 100%. Yeah. Um, I, I saw yeah. a post. It was so funny when I read it. It was someone in my chat. They said, the same people that stand in void zones on Kel'Thuzad are the same people in TBC that are going to move during uh, <laughs> during Flame Wreaths. Oh, like yeah. Karazhan. Like, yeah. That's true. <laughs> oh, dude, Flame Wreath. Oh, man. Shade of Iran. No, it was, uh, man, Burning Crusade was such a good time. I think, um, oh, man. What do you guys think is the, what was your favorite rate tier? I, like, for me, it was tier five. It's not even close. Like, tier five was the best tier. Yeah. Like, that, that's, that's it. Like, tier five was incredible. Like, I'll even go back. It's ironic that you say that because I was literally just randomly flying over to the eye to, to do the eye. Yeah. It's just, it's such a good raid tier. Yeah. And the bosses, especially if you look at the depth of what, uh, like what, what Lady Vosh was and the depth of Kael Thos, I know there's a lot of, a lot of nerds in here in my chat, at least thinking that tier four was really, or tier six was really cool. Illidan was a, was not really that complex versus Lady Vosh or Kale. Like if you and look at also, the actual, yeah, the actual mechanics, it's way more. And half the raid tier of tier six is Hyjal, which is, Oh man, like dude, it I is so AFK. bad. And I that, was twelve, raiding high jaw. I would AFK and do algebra homework instead of doing high jaw. Yeah, like, that's <laughs> when I would do my homework is raiding high jaw. I'd rather do algebra than do that raid. It's terrible, man. Yeah, I uh, I quit raiding in that tier uh, around around that time. I ended up quitting raiding, and uh, yeah. I, I just I just went full on PvP focus. Mm -hmm. uh, that that's what it was for me. So. Um, I mean, I'm excited to go through and get to do everything, especially things like Sunwell, because I didn't even step foot into Sunwell. Yeah, I, uh, I yeah. didn't step foot in the sun well. I didn't. Uh, I didn't kill Kelthos either because Kelthos was was. I mean, he was just bugged. Like you couldn't. They didn't nerf him until. Um, when they ended up nerfing him, how how close was it to uh, to Black like, Temple launch? Uh, it was. After. I don't remember. I don't think no, they. No, I think they nerfed it before no. it launched, but he didn't die until after Black Temple launch. Which, by the way, no. I still think Wait. is one of the coolest things. Am, am I? Am I wrong about that? Cool. I, I don't know when the nerf happened, but KT died ten days after Fetch two point one. Yeah, and and That's I think that. that is insane. Like that is that That's is so cool, cool right? Man. Yeah. That Blizzard was like, mm, it's time. Here you go. Here's tier six. Yep. Add in the new raid, whatever. Yeah. I don't think they should. However, I don't think they should do that for classic or classic TBC. Because the reality is that by the first week of this game coming out, ev all of the raid content will be cleared. I will be amazed if we don't have at least 100, probably, Magtheridon kills or 50 Magtheridon oh, it'll, kills. It'll be so many more. At the end of the first week. Yeah, it's going to be a, whole, a huge amount of people. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll say, like, to add on that real quick, I think all the tier 4 content is going to be cleared within 48 hours of, of TBC release. It could be. I think all of it will be dead within two days. 
It'll be it'll be then, fast. Then, I don't know how fast people are going to learn about but it'll be yeah. very yeah. very fast. Um, don't you think the KT nerf was like more of a bug fix? So what was happening was uh, like the ads. It kept was more of a bug fix yeah. while they were dead, like dead in quotes. So they would a, spawn up and they would go kill healers immediately. When they, yeah, because the, yeah, like the healers were generating threat, and then all of a sudden you'd yeah, go right. out of weapons phase, and then it was just like, okay, all the healers are getting on. Now, I would like to see people try and complete that fight with that bug still being in the game because there are ways <laughs> that you could oh, stop I, it, but it's so I expensive. Would, it's no, it's just, it's just, bad it would be design. stupid. And no, it would be stupid. I agree. Yeah. I would, I just out of curiosity, I would like to see it. I wouldn't like to see them put it in the actual game, but oh, it would, yeah, it yeah, would I be something it. interesting to watch, uh, like as a yeah. one time thing or whatever. But, uh, I remember, I remember before classic, all the people asking for pre nerf Cthulhu, and it's like, it's not pre nerf, it's pre, it's just bug fix Cthulhu, where it's like, you know, the, the pre nerf Cthulhu was you had tentacles spawning in the wall, like, you know, shooting I beams in your raid, and you can't yeah, even target yeah. the tentacle. It's like, okay, like, and tentacles in the stomach also, like, what, okay, that's not fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. it was, yeah, very, very similar thing with Cthulhu. <laughs> but, uh, but man, yeah, I think uh, I, I think I think tier five is is the most fun. And I do like that they're not releasing tier five and tier four at the same time. I think that realistically, it is going to be a, nope. a a good idea to uh, it give it a little bit of time. Cool. It sounds cool to do that, and I think that if they ever did like a race server for TBC where you start at sixty or something like that, then yeah, they could release them all at the same time and just see how far people could get with the base gear. Mm -hmm. But in terms of like actual just TBC. No, I mean, why would they do that? Because you're just cutting your own content short. And the truth is right. that it's going to take a lot of people more time than just a couple of weeks to get through all the tier four content. Yeah. People level slow, they play slow, they don't get their attunements right out of the way, they want to do some PvP, they just want to rep grind or, or whatever. So right. I think that's a big factor too. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people kind of bummed out over the whole, you know, it's only the tier four content at launch, thinking, oh, there's only three 25 men bosses in Karazhan, which is a small yeah. But like, seriously, there's so much content to be done with professions. Mm -hmm. You know, you get all your profession gear. There's all the heroic and reputation systems. Like, yes. There's a lot to do in early TBC that's yep. not 25 men raid content. And you're yeah. still going to have fun and be satisfied, I think. And it's not it's not really the same as classic content either. Like there is there is a grinding element to it, right, with the rep grinds and whatnot. But the rep grinds are very rewarding. And one thing that I did think Blizzard did that was really good in Burning Crusade was they really introduced another method of getting gear without... Uh, having to invest all this time and effort into raiding, like with, yeah. with the heroic raid or with the heroic dungeon, sorry, uh, being able to do heroic dungeons and getting really like low tier raid quality gear. Actually, at the beginning, at the beginning of Burning Crusade, a lot of the heroic gear was better than Karazhan gear, and then they ended up buffing the gear. I don't know. I mean, that that turns into a whole concept of like progressive itemization stuff. I don't think the uh, the way that the items progress in Burning Crusade are quite as drastic as they are mm -hmm. in vanilla like vanilla a lot of the early items get so buffed stuff like savage gladiator oh, yeah. chain ends up being good until aq40 whereas beforehand it was like a tanking chest it was like a male tanking chest it was it was like a decent tps chest piece um yeah. i think that if they don't do personalization which i don't expect them to do because they didn't do it the last time i think it's lazy all this stuff that they're not doing it uh I, I think that you're going to end up having a little bit better gear. Kind of the same problem. But if they're doing pre-nerf content, they've shown a willingness and they've addressed the fact that they thought raid content was too easy and classic. So maybe they would be willing to tweak things here and there in the beta, uh, which is what I'm hoping for. I hope I hope it's the right yeah. difficulty. The, I want the game I to feel that, right. I think it's obvious that like TBC, or sorry, Van Vanilla WoW, whenever they brought it out, the idea that people had of Vanilla WoW was clearly not what they got. Because the idea was like these really hard raids and people imagined it being one thing and it turned out that it just wasn't that thing. And at the end of the day, you can't just completely change the game. You can't redo everything. But I do think that the idea with TBC should be to make the game like the way people remembered it right. to a certain extent. And I think that's where they have that leeway with adding in the, uh, the buffs. But I don't think they should really change or nerf things or actually really buff things in ways that they weren't buffed during the actual game. Right. So, for example, like they shouldn't just like randomly make a boss harder because guilds are able to kill it easily. Well, they, should, they shouldn't be adding like a random mechanic or whatever to a boss for no reason. Right. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Just to randomly make it harder. Yeah. My... It's kind of nice to see. I, I think people at this point, after playing 18 months of Classic WoW, people are 
more concerned with like what's fun and good for the game rather than a strict adherence to the gospel of no changes, right? Uh -huh. So for me, it's like, you know, if they got rid of world buffs and classic, I'm like, mm -hmm. hell yeah, it's just not fun, right? And that's my, that's my personal opinion, but there's certain, and you know, another thing that I really dislike about classic is the dungeon boosting meta. I wish they'd do something with dungeon XP to, to, re to reduce the meta. So um, it's, it's good they're doing things like that in TBC. The first example is, the, is changing the drums, which is just really restrictive, unfun gameplay in my opinion. Yeah. Nobody wants to have to, like, it's not feel, fun. Feel the need. Never... Yeah, I mean, like, the thing is having the drums is just such a huge thing. So if you don't have them, you're just at a massive disadvantage. Like, there's nothing good about that. It doesn't make the game better at all. And why take a holdover from something that just makes the game more annoying and restrictive? Mm -hmm. I can't really see a positive with that at all. Right. Uh, one thing I want to touch on, and I, I've, this is something that I've kind of, uh, again, uh, I've kind of like preached this for, for a long time. The feeling of authenticity is a lot more important yeah. than factual authenticity. Because at the end of the day, yeah. no, nobody cares what the the armor value of Saffron in patch 1.1.4, 1. 1, 1. like nobody cares, right? It doesn't matter. Yeah. What what matters is that the, the fights feel good. The, the, it feels like I'm playing classic because that's what people remember. People don't give a crap about like the specific values of this and that. Now, the specific values can lead to a fight feeling a certain way. And then that's the developers. That's the designer's job to figure that out. But what what the goal should be is to give the players a good experience and what they're looking for, which is just that, like give, give them the right feeling. Like I want to feel like I'm playing classic, uh, just to kind of reiterate your point, Asman. Um, yeah. I think that, uh, I, I think that that's something that they really did not do a good job of with, with classic wow. And I'm, and I feel like it was addressed at BlizzCon. I feel like they, they at least acknowledged it. So, well, and you know, a good example of this is the whole paladin, uh, like, uh, it feels, the, the seal thing yeah. right where yeah. they fix the batch window and it's like ah oh, now paladins don't feel the same way and then they address it right mm -hmm. so yeah i think that's a good example of that mm -hmm. of them listening i agree i completely agree i think that there's a lot of examples of uh blizzard now kind of realizing that like the idea of no changes is exactly uh, it's ironically people were memeing about oh no changes is stupid like no changes haha ha. you know i'm stupid i like no changes and now we're getting the fucking that mount, right? Yeah, and, and, and this I think is how this whole thing really, started. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's originally what I viewed no changes to be. And I think no changes was a great starting point for redoing the game. But now that we've seen the way that people play, we've seen the way that people look at things like what Stay Safe was saying. Like I like raiding with world buffs. I just don't like getting them. And having to get world buffs and sit on them for a whole week, if you, you know, depending on whenever you get them or whenever you have free time, that's just not good for the, it's not good for the game, man. Yeah, it's, it's really not. Yeah. Um, I'm... Oh, there's a lot of things like that that I, I do. I, I have relatively a good amount of faith with Blizzard and I do think that they will try to make TBC good. It's just about making sure that we give feedback that's accurate and I don't know, and this is a question I have for you guys. They didn't test AQ40. Remember that? They did not right. test AQ40. Mm -hmm. And they didn't test BWL either. Do you think that they should do raid testing for those those raids? Like for uh, Karazhan, for the other ones? I think they should. I mean, what, what was the only raid they did testing for? Next. The uh, raid next. next. Right? And or the 40 man, I should say. Yeah, the, the 40 man. It was yeah. next. What was the best but they did, raid they tier? They did next in a weird way where they didn't let you like, you know, they, they gave you crazy buffs, which yeah. made it so you can't really practice your crazy min max speed run strategies or whatever, like super sweaty guys are doing. It's just like, hey, let's test that the timers on this boss ability work and that he actually, you know, because for example, you know, when BWL came out, Tons Guild had an issue on uh, the first boss Razor Gore where you'd kill the boss and the ads would keep spawning. So you try to move on to Veil and it's just ads. They just keep spawning. And it's like, well, we can't do that the raid this bug was in live. That bug was in retail for like- really. Yeah. So there years. you go. So it's like if, if they had tested that in some way, then that wouldn't have manifested on day one of BWL. Yeah. So I think they kind of learned learned from that lesson. There were there were issues with AQ40 as well, I remember, where, yeah, I, I think they should uh, like kind of super buff you and let you go into Gruul's Lair yeah. and just make sure stuff is working, right? Yeah, I do think if that... If they do that, I would be okay with it if it was just like super buffs to where like you never have the feeling because I don't want to have right. the feeling of killing Gruul because with Nax, I felt like I beat Nax on the PTR because like I went through and I did 
all of the PTR wings of Nax multiple times. Yeah. So well, Nax was like actually, a joke on the PTR because of how how buffed we were too. You know. Yeah. Well, we took less people, and so that's how we tried to make it a little bit easier or mm. a little bit more difficult. But yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I I think I I think Nax was far and away the best raid tier. And I, I think that this has been the best phase from a gameplay perspective of Classic WoW. And I think uh, a yeah. lot of people that I talk to talk about phase one and phase six has been the best and uh, from a gameplay perspective. Uh, and I, I would agree, right? I think the launch is always going to be exciting and you're meeting new people and it's, it's like a feeling of camaraderie leveling with your guild and you wake up and it's like, yo, we got to get our group going all this. Like that's, that's a very fun experience, very fun social experience from a gameplay experience and doing the raids phase six has been outstanding. Uh, but, but again, that's what the game was based off of the whole time. And from like a, uh, from, from the perspective of like, I guess, marketing your game and keeping hype up and keeping people wanting to play it. Uh, it's, it's not necessarily a good thing. Overall, classic still has a ton of people yeah. playing. It's, it's been a massive overwhelming success, uh, and all that stuff. Right. But I think the, you wouldn't, I mean, hold on. Well, these are wow players we're talking about here. You're always going to have resentment and people complaining about everything, right? Cause that's what we do. Everybody is going to be mad about something. It's like going to happen yeah. no matter what, but I think you could have reduced some of the stuff by, by approaching the game a little bit better and testing and, uh, being less worried about reducing hype just a little bit, because I think, I think Nax was incredible and it's been such a fun tier. And I mean, you take any guild that's been clearing Nax since week one two three any of that like my my raid full cleared next in, in week three which was cool and it was fun it was a grind it was exciting right it was we, we finally did it and it was awesome kind of bittersweet for some people i had people that i played with on you know for years like for four years ago i started playing with them on private servers who hey that's my last raid i'm letting everybody know and you know no hard feelings and you know we go and next man up we recruit somebody else but um that is something that I think is really underappreciated them, them testing it and, and approaching the game properly. So people can really enjoy and feel good about that tier. Any single guy in our guild. Now, if you've been clearing it since, you know, like I said, week three, kind of, I, I kind of split points it for a second there. Yeah. You take any individual player out of our guild and you would probably be the best geared, if not one of the most geared players, not in just any guild, but almost in the world. Like if you go to that iron forge pro website and look at people's average item levels, it's insane. Mm -hmm. Not that item level is like a primary, you know, stat that people look at or, um, I guess any sort of meter of like success and how good gear is, but the gear gets more and more optimized in the later tiers. A lot of the gear in burning crusade is very similar to, uh, Nax gear, the itemization of it. So you see people with almost like 90 item level now, and it's just, oh, it's just yeah. absurd. People are going to have really good gear and everything, and they're going to go into TBC. One of the things I even liked about the Nax gear is some of the Nax gear is competitive with heroic gear from level 70. And it feels like getting good gear in Nax actually does have some degree of an impact in TBC. I think that's really cool. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, yeah. yeah, a lot of the Nax gear lasts at least until all the way to level 70. You're very, very close. There are, there are items from BWL, like tier, uh, Neltharian's tier, that as a warlock, I am going to wear that. At, at all through heroics and probably in, into some tier four content. We, had, yeah, a mage, a lot of gear. we had a mage kill uh, Illidan in our guild with Nelth tier. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I, I don't know. I think that kind of stuff is awesome. I'm, I'm a big cool. fan of that. And I just hope, really, with TBC, the main thing that I want them to do, and this is also something I'm, I'm really kind of curious about, you guys. What do you think that they should do with Arena? Because how could they have that? We're not going to have battle groups. So how can you have rank one? How can you, you can do the top 0.5. That would make sense. But how do you do rank one? I think they've got to do it as point one. They, yeah, I, they've I touched the on this. Right. They yeah. touched on this at BlizzCon and they said they're yeah. still not hundred percent sure how they want to approach arenas. And if they no, want they to put in the, the new arena system, they didn't talk too much about it. Cause I think they, d they didn't want to, uh, they didn't want to open up that can of worms, but I do think there's something like, there's some sort of novelty and nostalgia about creating a roster and we got our team and this is our logo. And I think that was cool, but is that novelty going to wear off pretty early whenever, Oh, I can't play with the guys I want to play with. Or like this guy plays on the server and you know, there's only one rank one. I do like that. There's only one rank one. I, I do like that. It sounds like it'll be kind of a mix of both where you have a team with uh, an increased number of team slots and then everyone on the team has a personal rating. And a, and a mm -hmm. personal MMR that goes along with that. So let's say you have someone that's 2K and someone that's 15K and someone that's 16K or 1600. Sorry, we're mis replace K with 100. Yeah. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. your your matchmaking value is like somewhere around 1700, right? 
Which... I thought that the way it worked was you do have a personal rating inside of the team, and yeah, your personal they rating that. has to be within 200 points of the team's rating in order to get rewards from the team's rating. That they, uh, they did add that later on. Originally, it wasn't like that, and then they added that, uh, I think it was season three. Well, you definitely also have to play 30% 30, 30 of the games also to get the points for the week, right? I don't remember uh, that one. I, yeah, uh, it was it was something thirty percent. I think it was either the, yeah. either the points for the week or thirty percent of the points for or thirty percent. Uh, no, I think it was ten for the week and then thirty percent of the games for the season to get this end of season rewards. Maybe that's what it was. There's some, something like that. Um, it might have been thirty percent of the week as well. I, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I I really I, that's the biggest thing I'm excited for, and I think it's going to be one of the most interesting things that people are going to keep coming back to with TBC classic is having arenas and a, so like a sort of matchmaking, like a, Hey, check the rating for the first time in, in classic. Wow. Yeah. I think that's really exciting. I think going into pre-patch, just getting to do arena skirmishes in what is essentially like a project 60 for burning crusade is going to be incredibly yeah. fun. Like there, yeah, the, we were the, talking about this before we went live. I think betas like after a, month, a week or two, beta is going to be kind of boring. I'm gonna be honest, but pre patch is going to be really uh, awesome. Pre patch I is going to be amazing. I, I mean, who knows? Yeah. Beta might end up being really good for for a longer time than that. Uh, yeah. But I, the the thing I'm really really hyped for is pre patch and just getting to we have all our gear and uh, right now I'm in full on pre patch mode and I'm looking at oh what gear do I need for pre patch? What what do I yeah. need to have set up to where I can be hit capped going in and Especially like if, if you play a hybrid, I think hybrids are probably the most, um, I guess, biggest beneficiaries of, of the what you get in a pre-patch because Blur Burning Crusade made a very conscious effort to make the hybrids, uh, I guess, more accessible to people as far as you know, making them more viable for raids and giving them some sort of uh, buffs and other things that they could do to make the rest of the raid stronger. Like Rat Paladins, for example, are insane to have in a 25-man raid now. Boomkins are great. Uh, ferals were already discovered to be pretty good at this point and all that, but enhanced shamans are good. Um, it's just exciting. It's very, very exciting. I, and oh, another thing about pre-patch, and it's something that we have never seen before. It is actually going to be a brand new experience. And as far as, you know, talking about the meta of a game and part of the reason why the Burning Crusade or sorry, the classic beta was so fun was the, 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 the meta of level 30. We have a new meta now of paladins and shamans at level 60 that did not exist in original yeah. Burning crusade launch yeah. we didn't have that in the pre-patch change things like how fun is that going to be for us to do viewer raids with with uh shaman wind fury bot in our group like it's yeah. gonna be op <laughs> like, or a prot, prot paladin main tanking next ramus yeah whatever, right it's gonna be really cool oh shit that's Dude, gonna I'm be badass oh we're gonna have God. a taunt like I, yep. I, like for me, I'm I'm so looking yeah. forward to pre-patch and trying to just get I'm trying to get all my gear for pre-patch now at this point and just get ready. And we've talked about it a little bit. I have like I have ideas for like five or six events right now for you things that. This? Uh -huh. I'm actually really glad they're gonna do a boost now because I'm gonna boost a fucking paladin. Unbelievable, dude! I'm gonna, I'm gonna boost I'm, I'm going to the dark. Side. I'm sorry, I have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get a Thunder Fury and everything, man. Dude. Well, now, oh, you God. know what? They did nerf the threat from Thunder Fury. So this is going to be something interesting. Is Thunder Fury uh, going to be uh, as good as it was in original Burning Crusade? Because they nerfed it yeah, by the end. I yeah. think that, well, this is what happened. I think Thunder Fury will probably be good for tanking. It'll probably be good for tanking one mob. And the uh, spell power weapon will probably be good for tanking multiple mobs. So like for dungeon grinding or like dungeon runs, you'll probably want to have your Thunder Fury in your bags and then swap it on for uh, threat directly. But because of Consecrate and also mm -hmm. Holy Shield scaling off of the spell power coefficient of your weapon, the weapon having spell power on it will be better because you guys remember back in, in TBC, mm -hmm. almost all prop paladins had spell power weapons. Yeah, well, yeah, and that was, that was a big, uh, a big part of the discussion about Seal of Vengeance versus Seal of Blood. Because they gave Alliance Paladin Seal of Vengeance as a tanking seal, yeah. and they gave Blood for <laughs> for Blood Elf Paladins, right, as a, as a DPS seal. But the idea behind the design of those seals is that they uh, they're not meant to be something that you need a lot of like hybrid gear for, like spell power and this and that. But as it turned yeah. out, Vengeance just was worse than using Righteousness and a spell power weapon, and and like having a mix of spell power in your gear. So all the not Blood Elves. 
So I, I think it was, yeah, it was. For DPS, you'd want it, you want to be Alliance, right? And then for DPS for Ret, you'd want to be uh, Horde. For it, it, back in the day, back in the day, everybody just used Righteousness. And there was like some concept of, oh, maybe you can twist Vengeance and Righteousness. And well, you, you could well, probably you do it you now. Main, you maintain yeah. five Vengeance stacks yeah. and swap to Righteousness in between. Well, yeah. the, the thing was originally, originally Vengeance didn't even give you, uh, they, they buffed Vengeance a couple times throughout the course of Burning Crusade is what ended up happening. They ended up buffing Vengeance a few times through, throughout the course of Burning Crusade. Uh, originally, it didn't even have like flat damage on it whenever you had five stacks. So th they ended up changing around stuff, and then people would just still use righteousness anyway because it was it was it just ended up being better. And with seal no. of blood, you you don't you don't remember that? That's what that's well, I, what I was gonna say. Because um, that's what our prop paladin main tank did. Because we had a I don't main know if you guys have seen this. It looks like there was another data mine today where it looks like there is a de classic deluxe edition. Which I did see that, and I want to talk about that in a second. And the Dark Portal. What? Thing the yeah. What? Deluxe edition. What well, do you, do you guys want to go ahead and jump to it? Because uh, yeah. I, I have it up, and I was I was ready to do it. Yeah. So, come out. Uh, so it looks like talking about doing like a deluxe edition or something. Uh, it looks like that probably is what they want to do here, because uh, there's been a data mine, and you see right here, player has TBC DE, and you would think it's deluxe edition, mm -hmm. right? Uh, like maybe maybe it's just for the the uh, German client. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I'll, I'll drop it. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Warp Stalker Mount, Player has DBC Dark Portal Toy, Path of Illidan Toy. Maybe it's a deluxe edition. This stuff goes to retail. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's a deluxe edition for that. But how are you going to add all these toys and mounts and stuff like this in Classic and then not mm -hmm. add the, uh, the, the collection window? In, uh, well, there there are already like it's it's weird. TBC is a weird middle ground because there's already a lot of pets and a lot of mounts you can get in TBC, and it was annoying to like it was annoying them because you had to keep them in your bank. I mean, for example, there was the guy in Gadget Zan who you could turn in the code cards for, and there were like a bunch of pets and a bunch of taverns and a bunch of mounts you could get from the code cards. And it's like okay, now I have to waste like ten bank slots to carry these around, which is yeah. why they added that that functionality in Wrath, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. Like, it, it could just be, yeah, it could just be in German, and hopefully that's the case. <laughs> I don't want to see deluxe editions or any of that other kind of bullshit. Yeah. I, I really, really hope not. And, and like, the thing is, like, every, nobody wants to see this. Look at the, the top comment. Bobby's bonus ain't going to make itself. That's the first thing people were saying, man. I mean, that's what it is, dude. <laughs> like, it's, like, it, it's, it's, and, and people are going to buy this. And I'll be honest. I think a lot of people wouldn't care if it's, hey, there's a deluxe edition and that's it. But you know damn Wait, well they're I, not. I think the guy that made the comment actually used to work at Blizzard. <laughs> Wait, really? I think so, yeah. Lugia I, I Blizz. Reckon, no. <laughs> he knows how it goes. <laughs> oh, no. uh, that's how it goes, dude. That oh, is just how it goes. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. I mean, dude, it's it's... I think most people would not care if if you trusted the the company enough that it was like, look, if it's a one time thing, sure, but you know damn well they're just gonna riddle the whole damn game with it. They're, they're just going to. It's just gonna be. Dude, I, just, I, I, just gonna I would bet a thousand bucks that by the time Classic Wrath comes out, you know, flash forward two years, we've got a WoW token. Thousand bucks. Like, yeah. There's, there's no I way mean, I. I there's no way that we don't because look they already have wow tokens in china in, in the china version of classic wow now that doesn't so, necessarily mean like we talked about earlier it doesn't necessarily mean that it's coming here but it is it is a fair testing ground they have a different the culture and stuff. it's on, it's on the table yeah. and i think also look at how bad how easy would it be for them to say well we've had so much problems with gold boosting and gold selling that we're adding in the wow token to combat that because we're listening to you guys and everybody's been complaining about how much gold sellers and everything are in classic and so we're going to add in the wow token i think that could totally happen you know yeah. what's depressing like Im imagine someone who's new to playing classic wow or class tbc they buy this 58 boost cost them 60 bucks or however much and they're like okay so i'm level 58 now i have shitty gear i've got a shitty mount i have no professions i have no gold everyone oh, around me has tier three what do i do i'm gonna go buy some gold hey yo they should add wow token like this is the demographic that's buying gold and then pushing for WoW token on the forums. Like, like you could not craft a better gold buying demographic than these people, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because they're already conditioned into microtransactions. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and it's uh, a lot of people don't know how the the WoW token works. And I I will say this: I'm more 
Uh, I thought the WoW token was like the first time I ever heard of it. I was like, the what the what is going on? I don't think it's as bad as I as I originally thought it was because people still have to farm it themselves and they have to you know buy it on the auction house. Like the gold is still being farmed by somebody, uh, and and yeah. that's kind of their way of of combating against gold sellers. But I. I just don't know. I think you're right. I think there's, I just wouldn't be surprised if, if they try and make a push for it at some point and just see how it goes and all that. Mm -hmm. Is it something I want? No, not necessarily. Right. But I, I just don't see a world where they don't eventually try and push it. The thing is, if players don't push back on it now, they never can. Like once you open up Pandora's box, it's never going to get closed again. What do you think they're going to do whenever tier five comes out? Why wouldn't they? Here's a question, right? why wouldn't they add in another mount for another six month sub? Because I don't think this is going to be for a collector's edition personally. I think it's going to be for a six month sub and it's going to count for the stuff that you get in TBC. And what I'm expecting to happen is after that six months is over, somewhere around the tier five release, they're going to release something that is some version or some derivative of the tier five content that will come with the next six month pass. Mm -hmm. Watch them just sell that's, the ashes that's to just, Lamar Mount. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, just the ashes. It's just, it's just, it's, it's literally just like <laughs> snowball. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Just I, I just, man, I, I don't know. I really hope it doesn't turn into that. I'm, I'm very much, and I've been like this, and you know, because, because I've talked to both of you guys about this. I've been very much like for them changing some things on the back end. But the whole yeah, reason yeah. why the no changes thing started in the first place was because trust them. people were talking about this and then they didn't trust them. Exactly. People were talking about yeah. stuff like this, transmog and this and that and classic ones. Like, no, like these are things that don't work. I mean, one of, one of the first times me and Asmin talked was that one night I talked to you about like wanting to do a video series talking about all this stuff. And I ended up not even doing the video series, but we talked yeah. for like five or six hours. And we talked yeah. about the video for, you know, one hour. And then we talked about just random high school stories back and yeah, forth. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it's just what it was. Right. And that, yeah. that's, uh, that was around the time me and Aspen first became friends and, uh, it ended up yeah. not really being a thing and, and I didn't really need to do it. Right. Because I think most people got it, but now uh, that discussion is trying to creep back up. When people say, when the community says, look, this is the game and, and you guys should change some things, sure. Uh, you got you to gotta account for the times, all this stuff. I've been vocal about it. Asma has been vocal about it. Uh, Stacey has been vocal about it. Yeah. A lot of people have. That, at what point did anybody say add store mounts, add, add well, these the cosmetic thing is, things? Not only did they not say that, but that was the one thing they didn't want. They were like, okay, you can maybe, you know, do like a little bit of layering. That's okay. You can do that. But what we really don't want is we don't want microtransactions. Please don't do, please don't do microtransactions. And Blizzard is like, wait, did I just hear microtransactions? It's like, that's a good out. ass idea. What I if like they that. Do macro transactions where instead of like 60 bucks, it's like 6,000 bucks. So if you buy one of these mounts, like you're really just flexing on four <laughs> so, so The funny thing about it is like compared to a lot of other games, Blizzard already has macro transactions. $25 for a fucking mount. If you go and you play one of these phone games, you can get like a whole city for that much money. Dude, it's, 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 it's actually ridiculous. And here's, here's one of the, uh, here's one of the things I actually am okay with. Speaking of macro transactions. Yeah. Would you be okay with some cosmetic stuff being added to the game for a massive, massive amounts of gold? Not things that have any, any, uh, oh, yeah. benefit to gameplay or anything like that but massive amounts of gold for like a like a mount or something like that in game because that I think would be something that is it's not required or whatever but it would kind of help a little bit with the economy nobody would really feel required no. to buy it unless they wanted to but there's people just sitting on thousands of gold in classic wow because blizzard decided to not make changes to some specific kind of exploitable farming methods and stuff yeah. particularly in diamond yeah. and stuff you know and they did they that for do. years they should just take all the old TCG items because there's three tabards, the Tabard of Flame and Frost and uh -huh. whatever, and then there's the Spectral Tiger. Just put that shit on a vendor. If have it be a hundred billion gold. Like I, I, I don't know. There you go. It's a gold sink, right? Yeah. I, I don't know. People saying no to this. Now answer me so this. What would they, you rather have? Oh, go, go ahead. I'll go first. I, I asked my chat this question actually at the beginning of my stream, and I said if they were adding this mount, like the the Void Stalker mount, let's say it's like a special vendor in Netherstorm, and it's for five thousand gold, and it's meant to combat the inflation going into TBC 
would people be okay with it? And I actually got a lot of people that said, yeah, I would say even the majority of people were like, yeah, we'd be okay with it if it was to combat inflation. That's, that's but, exactly what I'm thinking. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm, I, I wouldn't really want that to be honest. I would not want that, but I would much rather prefer that than having it for actual real money. And, right. and that's, that's the case right now. And this is the reality. Yeah. What would you rather have? Would you rather have uh, like a new mount or something, not current mounts that exist that you can farm for and all that stuff. I'm talking about a new mount or something like that, new cosmetics, maybe even add the barbershop in, things that don't matter. Like the, the original barbershop, not like even uh, the yeah, gender yeah. swap, whatever, but like you can change your hair and face and, and like facial hair and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Would you be okay with that kind of stuff added in as a, as a gold sink that is entirely cosmetic and doesn't matter at all for the, the sake of, or, or would you rather people have this massive, massive just sums of gold sitting in their bags that's inevitably going to bleed back into the economy and, and make all the price, price of everything be inflated? No. Because if you're going to ask me. I don't want to see the barbershop come in because I remember seeing people's face and you would recognize that little eight bit face. Well, well. You would uh, see them and you'd be I, like, I actually agree it. with you. I remember. So, so you know, you yeah. remember Xavier, the, the, uh, the rogue. rogue. Yep. Girls so, don't play well. Yes, he was in my Gildan Classic. I played with him in, in uh, I played with him on Kel'Thuzad. Girls don't play WoW guy. So Zivia, he transferred in Burning Crusade. He and transferred at the beginning of Burning Crusade, and then he came back, and he had a different name. And I saw him, I, rem I will remember this day, because I used to duel Vetus every day, or uh, Zivia every day outside of uh, Iron Forge at the end of Vanilla, at the beginning of Burning Crusade. And I saw him, and I was like, is that you? And he had a different name. He had Zivia as, as his name. And I was like, is that, is that you? And he's like, maybe. I'm like, dude, that's totally you. I, I'll never forget your face. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, dude, it's me. I, I just transferred back. And and we ended up doing arenas together. And that's that was my good fives team and all that kind of stuff. But I, I do agree with you with that, right? I kind of said the barbershop just as an example. Even Even with the face, I wouldn't have a problem with people changing their hair and facial hair. But like the face, yeah, sure. That's not the point. That's really not okay. the point of what I'm saying. The point of what I'm saying is uh, adding in some cosmetic things as a gold sink for these people that have massive lump sums of gold that just want to, like Stacey have said with the micro -trans macro transactions, just flex on people and be like, yo, dude, check out rich I am. Look at my mount. Look at my Lambo. You so know? Let's double back. How would I'm you guys want to see the, uh, the, the, the TCG items added, added back in? Or would you I not would at all? Be, um, if, how would I feel about having TCG added, items added into TBC? So, like, let's say they had a Swift Spectral Tiger that you could get in TBC, and it was 10,000 gold. Whoa. And how would... Because here's the technicality, gentlemen, is that that was in TBC. So yeah. if you, if you put that in the game... That's not a pay to win. That was literally what the game was. Well, this oh, is what I think. I've got a bunch of fucking. It was, it was, it was made of cosmetic. Like well, it's dude, cheap. it's funny because, I, I, dude, I, I mean, I don't have that much gold in classic, but it is 10K yeah. is kind of too cheap now. It's it's gotten oh. really. It's I swear, dude, it's stupid now. It's it's snowballed Listen, completely out of control. Yeah, like I take them for gold all the time, and the best they can do is like 10 gold. If they're really going to tell me that 10K is cheap for them right now, my viewers have been holding out on them. They probably dude. are, dude. Well, they're all playing retail now. That's why. By the way, there are, there are people with like 1 million liquid gold. Like, I don't there, there are some yeah. people, it is insane. You, you have Naxxramas weapons going for 200K. One weapon. It's insane. Somebody yeah, it's something wrestled on a ruin. That was insane. Yeah. So yeah. here here's what my thing is specifically with something like the Spectral Tiger. Uh, I would be okay with them. Uh, I, I actually, I, I don't want them to put it in like that. I would be okay with them putting it in. In fact, I want them to put it in. You know what I would like to see is if you use the code, this is something that I do think there should be a link between classic and retail. If you have the code and you have that card and you have it from back in the day, I would like for you to be able to have that in, oh, so like in, in classic. Edition. If original, you have, uh, yes, wow. if you have the collector's edition, it, it, it transfers over from the original game. If you have a Swift Spectral Tiger card that you've already used on retail, I think it would be cool to be able to see that in classic. I, I'm totally fine with that. I, I think, in fact, that's something that good, that's good. Not only that, it kind of increases the value now 
of the spec. If they announce that they're doing that, that will now again increase the well, value you're just of those. Saying toys. that because you guys at your o OTK thing pulled a spectral tiger. True. Well, I know what you're doing. Well, I no. If anything, yeah. if anything, we already gave that card away. Yeah, Fuck, we, we wasted it. We, we should have kept it. That yesterday. Oh, yeah. Gave it away. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah we freaking yeah. We suck, dude. <laughs> Next time that I'm happens, actually, we're keeping it for ourselves. Yeah. Hundred percent. I'm actually <laughs> mad. Miss if unbought that spectral tiger, man. I'm How so funny mad. is that? You guys were so lucky, man. I am the Wow Andy. And yeah. some, the the okay, look, uh, as he likes to call himself, the Nintendo guy. N no, he's he's the Pokemon guy now. Yeah, yeah, he's the Pokemon guy. Yeah, he's the Pokemon guy now. Okay. Uh, but uh, he gets the Spectral Tiger. I was so jealous. I was so jealous of him being able to unbox that man. Do you, do you have one on retail? No, I well, no. I do have. I have the blue one. So the okay. Epic one has special armor on the tail, right? And that costs ten thousand dollars. Yeah, but the blue yeah. one's only you know four or five thousand dollars. Somebody gave it to well, me. So can... when you get the card, you cash it in. You get both. You get the shitty one and the good one. It's the same code. Yes, yes. You you receive uh, both mounts. Yeah, right. That yeah, it's oh they they, they yeah everybody says only. Well, anyway, uh, it, it is a lot of money, and I would be okay if they did something like that to combat inflation. But I do actually. You guys are pretty much okay with them like not resetting gold, right? Because I feel I, I wish I wish they would have. Well, well, really? can you do like a full reset? I I don't because here's the problem with them. And this is, they made a really really good point. If you go and you reset gold or something, now you're punishing people who are just playing the game. And, well, here's, and here's you, how you what do you it. could do is you could do like a. This is what I was thinking. Because my brain's on, I'm gonna forget if, if I don't say it now. Yeah, yeah. Like a, a square, like if you did like a square root curve, uh, and like a, you could do something where you made like 500 gold. The like, if you have 500 gold, you keep 500 gold. But if you have less than 500, you will get a little bit more gold. But if you have more than that, as you go up higher and higher, you start getting massive drop offs in how much gold you have. But how are they gonna figure that out? Right? Okay. Well, I'm gonna split gold up through different accounts, and I've got freaking offshore accounts and. We're, we're laundering money and gold. That's what's going to end up happening. So you could do something. Yep. And uh, like I, I had a graph. Somebody posted it on my subreddit of uh, this was like two years ago of something that you could do for Burning Crusade because we kind of everybody kind of saw this happening. That this is probably going to end up being the case. But if you do that again, it's still the same thing. Like, is, is it just going to turn into a nightmare? I don't know. What, what, what do you think? What was you, what, what were you thinking? I'm going to be honest, dude. I was not in favor of a gold cap or gold limit or reset. I, I was like, you know what? Let the kids play. If you farmed a million gold, you know, you have it. And then I started seeing in phase six, I started seeing people buying Nax gear for 200K. And it's not just one off. Like this is happening reg regularly for 150K, 100K, 200K. And then I started seeing that and I was like, okay, I didn't know people were that rich. And it's not that they are legitimately that rich it's that they're swiping their credit card right like that's that's what's like no one who no one who legitimately farms 200k is going to spend it all on one item that's going to be worthless in six months yeah like at the end of the game right and so if you if you did that where your gold has diminishing returns the more you have and you take that into tbc or they, they could probably pretty easily figure out like what the average amount of gold the average player has like let's say the average guy that plays the game has you know 5k gold in their pocket limit it at around that and then if you have more sorry you know, uh, I don't know, but peep, peep, however much the average guy has. But I had 100 gold is, two days ago. What, do you, what have you been doing? Here's, here's, what I think, here's what I think they should have done. I think, <laughs> I think they either go, uh, they, they either go, I don't know, I don't know how I go this way, well, let people have all their gold or reset everybody down to zero. I don't want to see some like log, logarithmic uh, equation that you know, reduces it based off of how much you have or something weird like that. I, I want to see everybody get reset all the way down to zero. And I think honestly, the best solution, what Blizzard should do is they should have like one or two TBC servers that are fresh, brand new servers. So and there's no gold on them. There's no players on them. And those servers release at either the pre-patch or they release at BC release day. I think a lot of people want a fresh and they talk about a fresh, but here's the thing that we've seen on private servers and just looking mm -hmm. at player behavior and whatnot. Yeah, the, I think it's the same thing, dude. The imbalance is so miserable. It is oh, always. So you think people will just it, can, everybody will play one faction. Everybody plays Horde. It is. Well, there's so another dumb. issue too. That's okay. very true. And I'll tell you this. Yeah, okay? go ahead. This is a harsh reality. A lot of the fresh Andes, they play for two months and they quit. Yeah, yeah, that's another like, thing. This happened in the private server days. This happened with Classic WoW, where everyone's like, oh, fresh. And then they play for two months or three months, and then they quit. 
there's, there's like on every private server. So yes. it's like basing your gameplay decisions around, or like Blizzard basing everything around this demographic, the fresh guys. Yeah, the, the, most the, of them the are old name, dude, the fresh around. cocks, dude, the fresh yeah. cocks, those old, that's what we yeah. used to call them. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you but saw Willy and game. you saw Mad Season do giant uh, like surveys asking their communities, like hundreds, not thousands, but do dozens of thousands of responses saying, you know, how do you want TBC fresh or progressive, whatever, where you're where you continue on into TBC. And it was always like between 15 and 20 percent of people that wanted fresh. So mm -hmm. unfortunate reality is the fresh guys, they are they are a minority. But yeah, I think I think at some point, maybe not now, but who knows, months from now, I think I think it'd be cool to have fresh. I think it really. I, I I'm not a hundred percent opposed to a fresh. I I just think the the two primary things are what Stay Safe said about uh, you do have you're, you're catering to a player base of people that are quick to jump ship that they're not really attached to their characters. They're like, I they're just bandwagon Andes. They're hype beast Andes. These are the same Absolutely. people that get whipped up into a frenzy to buy uh, sneakers for three hundred and eighty dollars from Kanye West. Right. Okay? Exactly. Like, these are not really the not, kinds of people. Not all of them, but a lot of them are, right? You want to base things off of. But I do think that there is a legitimate reason for people to want to see fresh servers because of this gold sink and uh, or sorry, the, uh, the gold imbalance. Right. And I actually think that having a couple of them, at the end of the day, especially if there's only a couple of them, there will be enough people probably playing on those servers, especially if you release them at pre-patch. Mm -hmm. And what an experience that would be. Even I, I think would that'd be want cool to too. kind of playing through it and that's completely new. Nobody's ever had a fresh level 60 server that ha start on pre-patch where you're leveling with paladins and shamans on Horde and Alliance. Right, and that's a, that's a really good point as well. I, uh, like, like I said, I'm not completely opposed to it. Oh, go, go ahead and finish your point. Why not? So- Wait, what, what is the reason, like, it, it, if it's one server, two servers, one PVE, one PVP, why, there's gonna be like probably realistically at least like 10 or 15 servers, like, Two there, more. There's gonna be well, well. What's gonna happen is they're they're gonna move all the servers up to, to Burning Crusade, and here's what I think is gonna happen. I think they will move all the servers up to Burning Crusade, and probably they'll have the classic era. This is the stuff that's already been announced. I expect that a little bit after TBC happens, they're going to do a new set of classic vanilla servers. So you're gonna have timelines of this will be the classic to Burning Crusade two Wrath then it's going to be on a timeline of this. You have a new set of fresh classic and that fresh classic is going to go to, uh, that fresh classic is going to go to burning crusade. Whenever the first set goes to wrath essentially. And you're going to end up having this like snowball of uh, like kind of like this rotating thing. Well, they will keep making fresh a little bit after the next expansion comes out. So then you'll have another classic comes out whenever you have a new wrath, a new burning crusade, and then a new classic. That's what I think is probably going to end up happening. Now, if they do a fresh TBC, and you said, why not? I think that you are gonna have a number of people go there. Do they wanna take the resources and the time to, to have another server going? In my opinion, you only need one good server. Like anytime people are talking about, is the game dead or oh, is anybody playing? You need one server. Like that's the only people that you play with is on your server. So why does it matter to have more people than that? Now, where it does matter. Well, I'm sorry. Did, were you talking about classic era just, just just now? Kind of, yeah. Dude, okay. I gotta throw it in real quick. I think the way they're doing classic era is so dumb. Where they're having classic era Peggle, classic era Ferlina, classic era Herod Gehennis. I think they need to put all these classic era players on like a handful, three, four, five, uh, cl classic era servers and consolidate all those people. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah, I think, hold on, is beta out? No way, dude. No way. It's not on mine. Did I, mean, I not? Uh, it seems like it's not. Uh, is public test realm more of the Warcraft classic? You know, we you got jabated. Yeah, I think we might have gotten jabated. Oh, we got jabated. Oh, man, the chat jabated me. Oh, I, dude. <sighs> Why do they have to do that? Wait, no, 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 no. Restart your battle net. Restart your battle net. What? No, I'm just kidding. I debated you too. So, uh, like, yeah, I, I think that the classic. <laughs> I, think... <laughs> I think I think the, the classic era stuff is fine, but I, I think what's gonna happen on those classic era servers is it'll end up being sharded like it is on retail. Because if you have classic Pagel, classic Fairlina, classic White Main, whatever, what's gonna end up happening is uh, that those classic era vanilla only servers are probably gonna die unless there's some sort of interaction with these other classic era servers. 
So I, that's why I think there's going to be some sort of uh, some sort of sharding or something. And they even touched on it, but they didn't talk too much about it at BlizzCon. And I think that's what they were. Yeah. Uh, so then, so then it's to. like retail where you're staying in Stormwind, and it'll say, you know, S Fond Farlina, and yeah, you'll, S-Fond, you'll see S Fond, you'll see S Fond Pagel standing next to you, and it's like, uh, okay. Then. That's I think that's the 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 reality yeah. of the situation and it probably is the best choice if they want to have that and people are just playing vanilla forever on those servers uh um, it's so hard to say like i would actually prefer to have a mega server with modified drop rates well the the idea yeah. behind that like the, what makes that hard is um people losing their guilds mm-hmm. people losing their names pe- like it, it really does server merges hurt like if you've ever been a part oh, of a yeah. server merge it hurts community a lot it hurts community a whole lot so. I mean, I feel I feel like this is the logic they followed in retail. Wow, and now you have completely dead servers where it's like you know you have people like I've had this name on this server for 15 years, <laughs> yeah. and meanwhile it's like them and seven other people on the server that no one's ever heard of because it's completely dead. Right. You know? I I think in hindsight, I don't know, Asman, like you're more of the retail guy. I think they probably should have merged servers a long time ago rather than do as as much cross server stuff as they've ended up. Oh, doing. are you kidding me? They should have merged servers at least at least five years ago. Like the thing is, I feel like Blizzard didn't want to merge servers because they felt like, oh, if we start merging servers, then it's going to look like the game is dying. But I, you know what I think makes the game look like it's dying? Whenever you go to a dead server. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I think it was a huge mistake for them not to do that. And uh, now, like even now, they're not really merging servers. They're just connecting them, which I don't think is enough. I want a complete server merge. Mm-hmm. I think that would be the uh, the best thing for them to do. And you're right, S1. Like the downside is, of course, you lose your name potentially. I, I don't really know how you overcome that. Um, well, it's it's like a community well, thing, right? Like I, it, it's hard it's hard to really like express the the sentiment of of what everything is unless um, it's it's really. Uh, Hold on. Are you getting it, debated it, again? Right? I are you are you getting know, debated actually. right now again? Hold on. I just checked. I just checked. <laughs> I just checked. Will you Sable, will you will you DM me on Discord? Can you do that? Hold on. This might be threat level midnight. Chat pause. Everybody pause. Streamers don't move. Statue time. Let me let me see this. Um, Give me a second, chat. Mm. What were we just talking about? I this totally got derailed because uh, I'm getting like bombarded with stuff right now. Wait, Asmund, are you talking? Never oh. came back to me. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. How, how long? Uh, how long were you going? Start over. Start over. Because we we were totally like everything. Everything was busted there for a second. Asmund, can you guys hear me? Uh, let's see. Which rant was that? Uh, uh go yeah, go go back and talk because I got to figure something ninja out. Ninja looting, zero responsibility. Honestly, that could be any of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that could be any of them. Give me one second. I want to restart my battle net and then I'm going to turn it back on and just so I can make sure. <laughs> okay. So uh, can, they, can they hear us right now or not? Yeah, they can hear us. They can hear us. Oh, they can hear us? Okay. Public it- test realm on classic. And I don't think that's really that's really yet. Uh, hold on. I, I have... I don't have the best information I could have, but I have decent information right now, and I'm trying to follow up on it. Okay. Uh, okay. We we had, 
Are we about to be playing TBC? I don't know. He might no be. Way. You think Blizzard does any work before noon? Like it, it's it's only twelve. That's a very good point. That's a very very good point. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so so here's um. Here's what uh. I don't know what you want to do about that. Um, do about what? So, sorry, just go ahead and continue. Uh, well, since beta, I mean, I, I, if it drops, it could drop any second now, right? If it drops, we, we If it drops, we're going, let's go ahead and just, let, let's talk about it. Because we, we didn't even really get into meetup. What do you guys want to do in the beta? Is there anything specific that you guys really want to attack and, and go for? Dude, I, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a raid together. And you know that big fucking pit lord at the front of the dark portal? Ooh. We're going to go in there and we're going to kill him. Like, that's the first thing we're going to do. That is the oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and now that pit lord does do a massive uh, hellfire. It, it will one-shot you. The hellfire will one-shot you. So you have to watch out for that. But other than that, yeah, that, that's about it. I can't wait to play with only other streamers because Blizzard doesn't invite anyone that doesn't Dude, stream. That is my the best part, part about it is that, yeah. you know, it's just like, it, it's like you put on like sub only mode or something like that. And you just, you, you rule out those people in your chat who are sitting around and trying to debate you over and over and over into thinking the beta is out. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's going to really be good. <sighs> Are people uh, actually streaming the beta now, or is this like private server stuff? I'm uh, happy it's either, either way, dude, if the beta is not out officially, you know what I think happened? If if people got the download last night because they didn't uninstall beta before, because this is what happened. If beta got, uh, if you if you didn't uninstall the beta before, there was a bug last night where it got flagged and you could download it. Yeah, I yeah. would uh, highly recommend not streaming it because uh, I know this from experience. If you stream something that you're not supposed to, you will 100% get banned. You will 100% get DMCA'd. Mm. You like there's there's almost a zero percent chance that you don't. Well, let me let me check something. I just heard something uh, that like you can log into a PTR server. Maybe I'm not sure. Uh, I don't uh, know. Guys, do you want me to try and do it? Like, oh, I'll, yeah, Aspen, open up PTR. There's an incompatible classic beta PvE server and PvP server okay, right now. Okay, cool. Let yeah. me go ahead and pull it up right now. Guys, you ready to see it? Let's Full go. Room classic. But All you right. have to, you, I think you have to have downloaded the client last night during the error, is how it works. Yeah, you should really okay. not, you should really not stream it. Apparently, people are saying Soda is literally saying the same thing on his stream. Because uh, yeah. why? Because Soda and I have both gotten in trouble for this stuff before. Um, well, you can look at the realm list at least and see that it's there, I think. Okay, so here's what we've got here. Uh, oh, yeah, I'll pull it up it. on my screen. And so it says, coming soon, Burning Crusade. And... But, so it looks like the PTR, so it looks like the beta it might... Okay, no, no it's know. incompatible, it, 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 it so it's not realm. the same client, yeah. but it's the same it realm change list. realm and you'll see it. Yeah. So yeah, we're, oh, we're looking at it right now. You see that? Yeah, log out and change realm, and then it'll it'll show the beta servers. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so again, guys, this is for the beta. This is not pre-patch. This is not anything. It's not real yet, uh, and it's certainly not for the actual release of the game. So because some people I think are yeah. confused. Um. So yeah, that's uh that's basically where we're at right now with that. So yeah, apparently they're they're putting the servers up or they're working on it. Surely, I mean, if this is up, I think it's a hundred percent going to happen today. I think I think it's a hundred hundred percent going to happen today at this point, with uh with those servers going up on that, and if people are trying to like get in. It's weird though. If that's the case, it's running off of the PTR client and not a separate like uh, TBC beta client, right? So it's like maybe if you have the PTR, you can just play it. I don't mm -hmm. know. No, because I'm on PTR. Okay, so here's what it says. Um, so if I go to change realm, it says right here, classic beta, PvE realm, and PvP realm. Yeah. Now, this is implied or assumed, but here's the thing. is you remember back the classic beta? The classic beta was different than the... Uh, the classic beta was different than the classic PTR. Like, it was two different clients. Mm -hmm. So somebody said... Let me see if I can create a it, new character. It'll, it'll be two different. It'll be two different clients on the same realm list, and we we don't have that client yet because uh, it's not uh, it's not flagged to go live. Yeah. So it looks like the only people that can play right now are people that had the bug manifest last night. They yeah. downloaded it, 
and now they can log in, right? But that's but, crazy. But so, yeah, people you're again, right? If you're a streamer, you will 100% get DMCA'd for this, and that's really, really, really bad in the current state of how Twitch is and everything. Well, if you if you log in and you're not doing anything with bad intentions, you're probably going to be all right. Like, let's I mean, be honest. But I mean, when I write it private servers, I didn't have bad intentions, right? So, uh, like, well, yeah, but it's illegal, right? I mean, like if right. you're logging onto the game that Blizzard is literally giving you and then just playing it without them expressly telling you that there's an NDA on it and not breaking the TOS, like you're not going to get banned for that. Well, I mean, yeah, that, that's the, the way games. like DMCA law works and stuff. It's I'm just saying they, I would be very want. careful. They can do whatever the hell they want. That's my yeah. point. And I would, it's not worth the risk of, of starting to play I'm gonna it. Ride, I'm going to try to ride over and see what the dark portal looks like. Yeah. If I can Ooh. just run through the dark portal. Fuck it. I'm going to do it. On the, uh, on go. the, on the PTR? Yep. PTR? Yep. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I don't think, it, I don't think it'll do anything because it's not, I don't know. I don't think Blizzard has said anything. There's been no announcement from them regarding this at all. And this has been happening for like 20 minutes now, so it seems weird that they haven't commented on this. And my talents seem to be the same. So we'll see what the dark portal is like. Yeah. That's why I'm confused. Yeah. People, everybody's logging on. Apparently every single person in here is, uh, is a scarab board. It's <laughs> crazy. Check Josh Allen's Twitter. He didn't type anything. People are just typing random things in chat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let, we're gonna go. We're gonna go ahead and continue, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna say this much. It's almost guaranteed we're getting beta today, uh, and and we're talking about things we want to do. As when you talked about wanting to kill the pit lord, we talked about this a little bit before too. Yeah. Uh, we're we're gonna level together. Hopefully, we can get all the McConnell and and uh, have Asmin and I, and, and hopefully McConnell are, are gonna be able to level. Stay, stay safe. What's your What's your plans for today? I don't know. Like, there's a lot of stuff. It depends on how high you can level, yeah. right? So if you go to 63, you do it in one sitting. It's not that hard. There's a ton of stuff to test. Like, can you turn in repeatable quests like Karaji Lord Insignias or ZG Coins or Water Pouches to level up really fast? Uh, I want to check Dungeon XP rates. I want to check, do you need Revered or Honored for Heroic Keys? Yeah. I want to check. Oh, uh, yeah. They changed. Uh, there's a lot to do, right? But I think probably the best thing to do first is just level, get to the max level, and then turn around and test some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think. I uh, do you think they're going to have it go all the way up to seventy? I think they will, and because there's oh, certain no. things that you're going to need to have wow. tested at seventy. Like maybe they don't do the raids and stuff at first. Maybe they do it in phases and waves of like, okay, we're going to do this, you know, care of phase testing or whatever, right? Uh, or they, they just have you do dungeons and heroics and stuff like that. But uh, I would like to, if I'm playing alliance. I would like to hit 70 yeah. and, and practice seal twisting with the proper mm -hmm. uh, how they're changing stuff without batching because they've gotten rid of batching on the PTR and that's gonna that's gonna hold true in classic uh, classic burning yeah. crusade. So these are things that I'm gonna want to have to practice because paladins change a lot. Like the, the class changes a ton for protection and ret. So uh, mm -hmm. yeah, like uh, you know I'm 100 gonna want to do all that kind of stuff. And and we do have plans, right? Like we we planned or we we've talked about so far like six different events to do between beta and pre-patch and classic and all this there's a lot of events coming that uh i've just kind of like throwing ideas brainstorming against the wall and it's going to be really really fun we'll, we'll do some otk stuff uh just some things in general it, there's going to be so much content to do right now and um i, I can't wait I can't wait. It's going to be, be amazing. cool if they cap you at like 63 or 64 or something. And then you can do like level 64, yeah. you know, a skirmish dual tur uh, or arena tournaments. Right. And like, mm -hmm. you know, no one like no one's ever done that. So it'd be like its own kind of unique meta a little bit. It'd be cool. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of excited to see what that's going to be. I'm kind of curious to see how how much content is going to be available. Like, is BC just going to be out and you just play BC? Because I do think they should really they shouldn't release all of the content. Because if they do that, I think it'll diminish the actual release of the game. I think releasing it in sections and only letting people do parts of it would be better to keep the hype. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, agree. I think that's like that's obviously the, the bonus of preserving the hype, but then also you risk having legitimate bugs that were that were yeah. untested, right? If if they do the yep. testing, I think I think it's fair to say that's if they do testing, the Nax the Nax testing was was a very good example of how it should be done. hundred mm -hmm. yeah. percent. Um 
Yeah, I, I think I, I have no idea how this TBC beta is going to go. I don't know when it's going to go live. I'm, I'm like, I'm so excited. I think it's going to go live for sure today now. Yeah, no, I, I think in the next two hours we'll be able to play. Yeah. I'm excited, man. I am. Uh, this is crazy. I'm, I'm hoping for it. But it we'll does see. seem weird that after half hour of this now, though, that there's no yeah. commentary at all. For I mean, what if it's what if it's not live? What if we just all three of us didn't get it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what if it's not? Sorry. What if it is live? Not it's. What if it's not? Uh, people playing the download from last night. Yeah, I guys. I, like I know everybody's saying like my mom is in, my sister, you know, this guy, that guy's in. It. It's not the point. Like if it's not live, they they. It, they are 100% in their power. I mean, they can DMC you for whatever they want. Like, we like we know how the laws yeah. work. I've gone through this personally. I'm just saying it's probably not in your best interest as a streamer to do that. Because what, oh. if, what if you get live DMCA today and now you can't stream beta on the first day because they you want to play in the servers, by the way. They just shut them down? Shut yeah. Them yep. So guess what that means? That means that was not intended. That means delete the VOD, probably. I'm just, I'm just being honest. Like, protect yourself. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> well, I think that's... Completely unnecessary. It is completely unnecessary to do that. Um, I, I, it, I've been through it. They do it. It's, it's, it's obnoxious. Like, were, no, it, it, I, I, it's, a, it's apples and oranges, man. It's completely I, it, different. It, it's a little different. It's not completely different, but it is a little different. Yeah. Because I, I'm just saying if, if, I, if, I am, if, if I'm in that situation and there's a chance that I get banned on, on the day of TBC beta launch, for it, it's, it's only going to be a 24-hour probably for a DMCA. But that is gonna suck because because you played an extra thirty minutes. You know what I mean? Yeah. For thirty minutes or what, maybe 10, 15 minutes, it's not it's not worth. And they just took it down, right? Which to me is like the most telling. Like I'm out, peace. I'm just being I, I, like I'm just being. Uh, and uh, the dark portal is uh, the old color. It it's not new or anything like that. And it's still just being guarded by all of those elites. So right now, it seems like we're not going to be looking at a uh, at, at a new new PCR. I mean, the thing is that they might not even have this available, and it might not come out for a while. So I'm not too worried about it. I think it'll probably come out, hopefully, in a few hours, maybe maybe in an hour. I mean, it could come out in in an hour. Yeah, I don't know when it's coming out, but for sure it's going to come out. Uh, so I, I think. Uh... Let's let's go ahead and get uh, get ready to wrap this up here. We've gone a little bit longer than we expected. Yeah, sure. We were just rolling. Uh, let, let's do a let, let's do a few questions from uh, from chat. If uh, you guys in chat want to uh, give us some questions, if you guys want to tweet at us, uh, mm -hmm. or Stacey so had a situation that he's trying to uh, figure out. But uh, if you don't want to tweet with uh, hashtag hashtag classicast at uh, at Asmongold at SFan TV, um, I'll, I'll look at some questions on Twitter too. Do you eat corn the long way? The long way is the only way, dude. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and feel free to ask questions, and um, we will uh, we'll go ahead and get ready to wrap it up because this is going to be very exciting. I think we're about to get ready for a beta. I actually uh, want to kick this off. I have a question for chat, uh, real quick. Uh -huh. uh, do any of you work for Twitter? If any of you work for Twitter, go ahead and DM me after the stream, yeah. and uh, we can work out a deal. Okay, thank you. Well, let's just go ahead and say what it was. So. Stay safe. Downloaded a VPN on his phone, and because he accesses yeah. Twitter on his phone, he gets perma banned on Twitter, saying that his uh, he had multiple accounts and he was doing uh, some kind of like you know illegal like breaking malicious TOS activity. malicious yeah. activity, yeah, something like that. And the, the, the so you ended up getting banned. Like, a, like, like a month after I got banned off Twitter, this app got taken <laughs> off the iTunes Store for harvesting user data. So it's yeah. like, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's the way it is. Yeah, so like it's it's very clearly like a mistake, but you just kind of got screwed by the IP tracking, or whatever the bullcrap is. Yeah. Um, now, honestly, like yeah, getting getting banned from Twitter is probably good for your sanity, to be honest. Stay safe, but for for the sake of everything else, for the sake of everything else, uh, yeah, it'd be nice if states have get unbanned. But if you guys want to tweet at us, if you guys want to ask some questions in chat, um, do you guys have anything that you guys want to ask? Asmin, stay safe, myself. Uh, okay, well, let's let's ask some pretty interesting questions. I think I've got one. Uh, so now you're your classic player. Let's say level sixty. What can I do right now to prepare? And what items are going to last me into TBC? Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I think the single best way to repair is level as many sixty alts as you can and get three hundred tailoring on them. Tailoring alts going into TBC are going to be so incredibly lucrative 
for all you guys. That's what I would say. Level, level, level. Or, uh, yeah. hey, if you're a CEO in real life, go ahead and boost. Yeah. 58 boost. Smart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think uh, I think having a bunch of alts and stuff is going to be helpful if that's what, if that's what you want to do. I've always been like a one character kind of guy. Like I just like to focus on my one character. So what I want to do to prep for TBC, there's not a lot of gear that's going to last that long, but there's some gear that is going to last a decent amount of time. You want to look at uh, an item like Slayer's Crest and Nax. Kiss the Spider is considered by most people to be better than Slayer's Crest. Slayer's Crest is kind of more PvP oriented. Kiss the Spider is more PVE. Um, mm -hmm. As you scale up to level 70 haste percent all the percentage stats change to ratings so that haste rating gets worse and worse as you level with kiss of the spider and uh that attack power stays static slayer's yeah. crest is almost as good as uh bloodlust brooch or however the heck you pronounce it in uh from the badges and so uh slayer's crest for anybody that doesn't know uh, slayer's crest is a trinket that comes from saffron it's mm -hmm. a very end game item and if you're able to get that it's only slightly worse than a level 70 epic item it's extremely good yeah so uh, any of those items especially that give things like hit rating like nelts tier that's another really really big one mm -hmm. uh there's a few other ones as well i'm trying to just think of uh let me th Hmm. Well, it's and it's 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 the so saffron. You want to have an extra one of those. If the shoulder possible. enchants are still good for a very long time. Still As uh, are if you're a caster. Uh, the current wizard oil is still bis for casters all through TBC. The one mm -hmm. you can get right now. Another thing, and we're talking about like getting like oh, just, like it's like oh, forehead. Just go get bis loot from Max. That's hard for a lot of yeah, people. Yeah. Another another thing, another thing you can do is you can get twenty marks of. Or at the base, some worse on Gold Chanel Valley oh, on all of your alts, and, and you can use those currency. You can use those marks as a currency in TBC at level seventy to buy mm -hmm. uh, level seventy PVP gear. So you guys can pre farm twenty marks now. Well, and yeah. uh, a lot of the honor, the honor stuff, right? Get go ahead and get your marks now, and then and pre patch in case you don't know. All the ranking gear uh, becomes available to you as uh, through honor. Like honor becomes a currency as, instead of the current honor system, and then you can use that to buy the uh, the PVP gear. To, to level up with so people end up having very good gear and and you know in pre-patch you can kind of get all that stuff sorted out and i just want to talk one more time about slayer's crest someone just linked that one scarab brooch doesn't change at all people use scarab brooch on uh, the... lich 10 man or on lich king heroic to avoid infest because it's a it's a flat 15 percent value so effectively scarab brooch if you get it now has the same value now than it will in tbc Dude, yeah, scared crazy Brooks story w. like this is one of the reasons why uh, i mean he's a good player too but this is one of the things that helped athene get gladiator back in season two like he was one of the first people to be like ah scarab Brooch in arena in tbc on a hoi paladin is mm -hmm. really fucking good yeah and so he used this in arena on his hoi paladin and it helped him out a lot it's a very good trinket in yeah. TBC. well so. especially because paladins don't have an absorb shield so now you're adding a mechanic to a class that just i mean this, this is gonna i'm gonna get started in a rant so i'm gonna keep it short but you're adding something to a class that doesn't exist and there's no other way to get it and it's big time right it ends yeah. up it ends up adding a whole nother dimension because if you get out of line of sight or whatever that extra 15 percent shield is massive uh this is again why blood elf paladins are so good with the aoe silence and the the seal of blood stuff it's good that they're adding seal of blood to alliance as seal of the martyr but uh blood elf paladins are still uh outstanding i, I think blood Elf paladins will still be better in pvp with the aoe silence because the paladins don't have one and uh Alliance yeah. Paladins will probably be better in PvE now, human Paladins, because of expertise and the uh, resist resistance to dodge or working against the dodge and parries and whatnot. Um, what else? Uh, Soda says people are logging into PTR getting kicked because they're not supposed to be there. Yeah, I, that's over. I mean, it's it's whatever. I, I like. I kind of uh, said what I, I did as a warning because I think a lot of like smaller streamers and stuff they, they watch and they're kind of like oh what everybody else is doing and that is a warning just because I'm like, trying to help people out here I, like it doesn't it's really so matter. It's so crazy for me to see people and they're just like stacked in Nax gear like you see people with like ATS. I'm telling you, dude. And with Might and the the caster shield I forgot what it's called. This is so crazy I, for I'm, me to see. I'm telling you, it's because it's because think about gotta it. Start Man. Like I should start raiding Nax. Well, the the world first Nax clear happened when day one of Nax launch on Classic. When yeah. was the first Nax clear in vanilla retail vanilla? It was way later, and you only had like about twenty five guilds complete it. So now mm -hmm. you had also... what, what, what was the what was the week one clear? Stacey, do you remember it was like fifty guilds, fifty some guilds did a full clear in, in week one? 
I don't know. I just remember watching progress and they owned on day one. Yeah. yeah. So, so there's going to be way more gear and that's why almost any one of these guilds that cleared in the first few weeks, you take any single character in those raids that have been raiding the whole time. And they're going to be like, they would have been, they would have been equal to the best geared character in any guild back in the day. Yeah. So it's, it's just crazy. I mean, you yeah. also have a selection bias where it's only the biggest no life turbo nerds, uh, even play on the PTR or care to copy over. Uh, so these guys, I mean, I play in the PTR yeah, all the time. These, are, these, are, these, are, these guys are nerds. Yeah. Yeah. These are, the, yeah. The, those guys are, of course, it's not me. No, it's, uh, I'm, I'm totally different. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. It's those guys over there. Those mm -hmm. losers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's just different. It's totally different. Actually, you I'm, know what? People are trading me gold. I should just like actually log on to my actual classic character and just uh Dude, get really gold and then give some to me. Again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, again. Because uh dude, my all everybody who watches my stream is is poor in classic. Yeah. Because they already gave me all their gold and I used it. Because you already take so gold, <laughs> <three>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's cause they're it's cause they're busy. They're raiding, okay? They like they're all well, they're all broke. You know Here. what I mean? That's why I deserve a transfer to Pego. I took all the gold on Ferlina from all the people that wanted to give mm. it. So I was like, you know what? If I want to keep that gold, I got to go to a new server. All, yeah. them, all them streamers. All them streamers. I'm going to run to the bathroom yeah. real quick. You guys continue. I'll, I'll be very, very quick. I'll be right back. Okay. So you staying on Pego for, uh, you staying on Pego for TBC? Yeah, dude. I got to say, like, I'm yeah. really happy on Pego. I, I think sure. I wouldn't change a thing about being on Ferlina, a PvP server for phase one through five, because world PvP is insane uh, for oh. one through five. And then everything after AQ40 opens, uh, for me, it's kind of downhill. And then in TBC, World PvP is not such a great experience anyway with flying mounts and stuff. But I mean, the big thing for me is like a streamer, Pagel has two times the Alliance player base than any other server in the world. There's a lot of people that play Alliance on Pagel. So for wow. putting on events or doing stuff or hanging out, like it, just finding groups for my alts and leveling, it's really nice to have that many player players. That actually could be good. Yeah, I never even thought of that. Yeah this camera i have man it just it does not want to stay on it's nuts is, is the battery just dying or what i have no idea like i really I, I don't know why i feel like actually one of the reasons why it's it's dying is because like it's so hard for me to diagnose the problem because it's completely like anybody that's done tech support before would know this anytime that you have a problem that is intermittent that you can't cause to happen you can't trigger this effect it's super hard to diagnose what it is. So yeah. I don't know if it's my OBS. I don't know if it's the overheating. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's my uh, my power source. I don't know if it's the camera being messed up. It's hard to know. You can't, yeah, I can't reproduce the problem. So I, I don't really know what it is. And then on top of that, the issue is exacerbated by like 10 million people in chat acting as if they know what the issue is. Oh like yeah, everybody. Individual yeah, opinions. I'm yeah. actually the only person here who doesn't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, everybody else has a has a great idea. And oh, look at that! People are sending pulling Tarimus the Devourer over to uh to have it kill me. That's great. Wow, it's just just like just like the actual beta. Yeah. Oh man, I was gonna ask like, is yeah. anyone or, or or you you as an individual, do you have like Phase One Classic WoW nostalgia yet, man? Like for me, that yeah. was the most important point. I have PTSD. Like, I only have nostalgia for leveling. I feel like after I hit sixty, everything sucked. Like, but leveling and like logging in in the morning and like seeing all of your friends that you play with and you know that I have I have big nostalgia for, but yeah. not anything else besides that. Yeah, I mean the du the dungeon grind like cause the meta was like ten man Zulfrak and stuff like that. That sucks. Well, we kind of stopped doing that towards the end. Like we did yeah. some dungeon grinding, but the only real dungeon grinding I did was I did like maybe five or 10 ZF runs and I did a lot of Scarlet Monastery because, you know, like that 30 to 40 for Alliance is just super painful. But other than that, I mean, I ran with a five stack group of a lot of the people that I still raid with, which is really cool to see, you know, it's like, oh, you're requesting in Hills, Brad, Foothills with these guys and, and now you're clearing Knacks together. Like that's what the game's about. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah, 100%. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. Honestly, I do hope that they do new classic servers. I think that'll be really cool. I don't think they'll ever really recapture what classic was again, unless they do. I know this is going to sound really stupid, and I've said this multiple times. Classic, classic. Where they release classic yeah. WoW in the state that it was in in 2004. Yeah, like With a 1.1 like like true progression. Yeah, I mean, like I, dude, they're just actually, too... They're not gonna do it because they're too lazy. Like they're they're gonna well, be I'm like, oh, thinking... we don't want to do the patch updates and go one by one. Like 
I say lazy. What if they did like, classic, classic, and had double the layers and double the bots and double the double the spell batching? Yeah, and double the eight hundred milliseconds. They just doubled all that shit, man. Call it classic Inferno. Yeah. Oh, yeah, call, oh be even better. Yeah. Classic reforged. What do you think? Oh, there it is. There yeah, it is. I that'd like be that. good. I think that'd I'm be really good. It also, I'll be right back. Yeah, go ahead. No. Um, I don't know, man. I think that if, especially like right now. Dude, now that now that the game is like on, uh, it, it's like on the edge of coming out. Like it, oh my god, I kind of want to do Nax. Like maybe I should try to do. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude. It, it's it. like I, I've I've had this. Uh, like I, I like oh. classic, all, all this stuff. Like it's 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 been there. Yeah. But there is like a recent like I feel like a like a crack addict. Like I'm like, dude, I gotta like I just I'm sitting here and I'm like I gotta go. Like I gotta go look at like Wowhead and just like look at items and like okay I gotta yeah. do this like get ready for pre patch, cause dude we are gonna like doing viewer raids and stuff like it's gonna be so much fun it's gonna turn into like it's just gonna be great it's gonna be the freaking circus dude circus is coming to town it's awesome I'm super yep. excited beta is gonna be great too for its own reasons pre patch is gonna be good the launch is gonna be good um, and we'll we'll go from there right but this is like a very exciting time for uh, for for all of us. You know yeah i i agree with that definitely i mean i i'm just i'm just sitting here waiting like in an anxious preparation for that i just looked and it looks like my guild is doing all right there oh. i'm gonna ask if they're they said they said yeah they're doing it they're not gonna invite you they're gonna they're gonna they're not gonna invite you without me they're just gonna be like, no, you can't join. You signed up, but you didn't show up. Oh yeah, I did sign. Up. Dude, you are you serious? You dodged? <laughs> I forgot. I well, because like here's the reason. Like they said, the raid starts at two, and I was like, oh man, there's no way they're gonna be ready before three. So I just kind of logged on. It's like two forty-seven, and I, you know, like that's kind of oh, oh yeah. Guess who wants to join the guild again? <laughs> who? Ozzy. Can you believe that? He, he still keeps coming back. Dude, they, all, they always that. keep coming well, back, dude. They always keep coming back. That's how it works. Even after I ninja his tier 2 helmet, man. That's, oh, you really did ninja that DPS Warriors tier 2 helmet, man. How could you? How could you and, take yeah. the tanking helmet for tanking over that DPS Warrior? That's just so disgusting. I mean, the, the shamelessness of streamers has just gone too far. Yeah. I'm going to make a Reddit thread about this right now. Yeah, yeah. Man, dude, a classic classic launch had so many just ridiculous moments, and this is this is what's one of those things like it's you had a bunch of people that were high roading, making things out to be things they didn't oh, want to because yeah. they just wanted the drama and they want to act like something was something that it's not, and uh, it's it was just so dumb, dude. It's so dumb. I, like I'm so I'm so over all that. It's just if someone's being stupid, Honestly, just tell them to be stupid. Here, here's how I'm looking at TBC. I'm going to play TBC for fun. Like, I, I want to play this game for fun. I want mm. to enjoy myself. I want to do all the content. I want to make great stream content. And living up to the game's expectations or some sort of random person, you know, reliving their memories, I, I, I don't care. I, I just want to play the game and yeah, have just, fun. Yeah, just play the game and have fun. And that's that's what it, really what it should be, right? Like, you don't, like, upholding the sanctity of this and that. Like, look, you, you need the game to be the game because of the game, because of the gameplay, because of the design. That's why. Like this uh, weird, uh, cringy sort of, uh, you know what happened to Herod? Uh, like, yeah. Herod, Herod yeah, was the anti-streamer. Like, they, they took our loot and took our germs. I lost my rage spot. Like, all this stuff. Streamers can't come here. You know what happened to Herod? Fairlina has so many people transfer from Herod, and every single one of them tells me Herod is an absolute shit show. The server sucks. It's it's toxic. It's it's annoying. People don't like playing there. And, like, the server is... is it, it should, and they came to Fairlina to get rid and of they, toxicity? And they came to Fairlina. You know why? Because Fairlina is an active server. The, the community is mostly good. Which, at first, the beginning of Fairlina, it was like 40-60 alliance horde split. But then whenever Asmin stopped playing Classic, uh, somehow oh, a bunch of horde that. happened to drop off. I wonder how that happened. That so, was the best part about it. Is yeah, that it's whenever, really weird. Whenever I quit playing WoW, the horde population went down. Yeah. Not the alliance. Not the, the alliance. alliance. But the horde went down. Alliance was was fine. 
and like we uh, like i think a lot of the alliance guilds for the most part like work really well together on Feralina and all this stuff and horde everything i've heard from people that play on horde it's just like they they there's a lot of egos and like they can't get their freaking brackets right and it's gotten better but especially the beginning was really bad on horde Feralina. but hey again big surprise right like it's it's, it's yeah. gotten better because people leave and what kind of people are they the Why people who are there to is? fight against attention Why do you think the horde like kind of kind of attracts those players yeah, I don't think it's a Horde Alliance thing. I, I think it's specific to that community. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah I think I think it was so. specific to the community that, that was that just happened to be there. Like, I yeah. don't think it's a Horde Honestly, Alliance thing. It, it, dude, the, that part of Classic sucked. It totally did, and it's over, and I don't even care about it yeah, anymore. Yeah, it's, it's over. It's over now. I, but, like, it's, it's, it's funny to look at, right? When it's, like, it's, it's so clearly obvious. Um, I don't know. I think, I, I think overall classic has been incredibly enjoyable it still is like i still do my raids every week stay safe still does raids every yeah. week uh mm -hmm. a lot of people are still doing it and um it's really fun and now it's kind of like full steam ahead getting ready for uh getting ready for tbc and getting ready for pre-patch and betas almost i think it's all but guaranteed right that it's going to be today i oh, think sure. it's got a really high chance i mean if it's not today okay. man like I'm gonna stay on, guys. I'm gonna be on. I'm gonna stay on for at least probably like four or five more hours. Yeah. Like I'm waiting for this, and if it comes out, I'm gonna go until 10 a.m. or sorry, 10 p.m. and then I'm gonna go to bed, and I'm gonna wake up in the morning at 9 a.m. or 8:30 in the morning. Yeah. And I'm gonna play all day, just like S Fan and I did in the classic beta. It's gonna be the same thing. Yeah, and we'll level and we'll do dungeons and. Yep. Dude, I, look, yeah. I look. I already got my tanking gear ready, dude. I'm ready to go prot and tank yeah. dungeons. Well, do you think they're going to let you copy your character over or give you a 50 at template? It I, seems like 50 at template based off what we just saw, right? From people. Me. I don't care. Is that yeah. is that what people said? I, I'm good with either one. I'm good with either one. If it's a 58 oh, template. You pre-made copy that character over so fast because this happened in Shadowlands uh -huh. where you were supposed to have pre-mades, but I got my pre-made. Oh, really? Because I got it before, yeah, I got it before they removed it. Okay, frick. So, I gotta, I'm, so. I'm, I'm, I'm literally going to camp the battle net launcher. If it if yeah, it is yeah. guaranteed 58 template, I think that's fine too. And to be honest, maybe it's a little bit better. I, I I would expect them at some point to do like a character copy for like testing purposes. But for like a yeah. hype thing, I think it's better to not do that because uh, it, it's gonna make everything really easy if we have our like full Nax geared characters or AQ40 then, geared yeah, characters going yeah, into it. Let, let me tell a really funny story. So S1 mentioned that prior to Classic Beta coming out, like Blizzard flew us down to California to do the, like we were there for a promotional thing. And it was like they told us we were under NDA. We, they let us play the Classic Alpha for a couple hours. So they have uh, character templates. And S1 logs in on his Paladin. And there was no two-hand weapon. And oh, he was I like, was so mad, was like dude. freaking Honestly, out uh, because the I, template uh, didn't have a two-hand uh, weapon. So they're working properly then. Dude, I yeah, exactly. was so mad, dude. I was sitting there, and who who was behind me? It was uh, I think it was Kyvax, and I'm like, Kyvax, hey, I don't have a weapon. Can, can you get like a GM? Can you spawn me a weapon? And they're like, uh, yeah, the like. I, oh my God, yeah, I met him. He, I like him. One of the nicest people you'll ever meet. One of the nicest people you ever meet. But I, I don't like. I don't have a weapon. Like what do I do? And I end up like I ended up just playing like prot. Like the gear was so bad. It was a random mix of yeah. like greens blues it wasn't even a good tanking weapon i think i didn't even have a healing weapon it was just it was just stupid it didn't like it, it was hilarious but that's kind of what classic is like for most people leveling up that's the experience like you're not going to get like full bis and do all the dungeons and get everything leveling up now some people did that i did that a lot where i like to go and that's part of the, the dungeon grind right the fact that we did dungeon grinding yeah yeah but um but yeah you know i kind of wish they had they had uh announced or that they, they, well, maybe they're still going to. Again, it's all but guaranteed. But uh -huh. um, I kind of wish they were going to put out the beta tomorrow. Because so many guilds raid on Tuesday nights that, like, at least for classic players, and I'm sure retail players are the same way. Like, it would have been kind of, because now you're, I guarantee, if you're a guild leader, raid leader, whatever, you're going to have a lot of, oh, oh, oh something oh, came I up. Oh, dude, my oh my cat yeah. got you know stuck in my laundry machine or like it's it's gonna be some sort of random wow. fire truck ran over my router like some stupid yeah, yeah. Uh, like bullshit excuse I guarantee oh, you're gonna start seeing yeah. some stuff yeah just things you've never heard of just for people to end I up remember, dodging raid my fish is I, I drowning remember, I remember there was this one guy in my guild he said oh guys my internet just died and then he sat down and did the twenty second log. <laughs> 
<laughs> just like so obvious. Okay, so yeah. the fire truck ran over my router. I um, that that's a real story that happened to me, where not to me, but oh. I was in a raid. And I, I'm trying to remember. It was in Burning Crusade. Oh, maybe it was actually in pre-patch, and we were doing molten core, and somebody disappears, and he shows up after like ten minutes. And he comes back and he gets on vent, right? You hear the doo You hear the like the vent noise on his mic. Yeah. And he's like, hey guys, I have to go. A truck ran over my router. And this is in like 2006, 2007. Yeah. So we didn't have phone. Like this wasn't like you got on Discord on your phone. Like he, very clearly, he was just lying. And they just li everybody, literally everybody was like, what the hell? And the guild leader was like, I don't, I don't even want to kick that guy. That was such a good excuse. Like he was obviously lying, but he just he was just went with it. And he's like, yeah. I'm, I don't even care. Just let him go. It, like it was, you can't prove he's lying. Could have happened. It could have happened. A truck drove so, into his house so and ran over his router, and he still had internet. I just pulled up uh, Wowhead, and let me see if I can pull it up right here and, and show you guys. Uh, it says, Burning Crusade Classic Beta playable briefly. Servers are now back down. After yesterday's misunderstanding, apparently there is no actual uh, official statement about this at all. The only thing that they've got had is the Burning Crusade Classic Deluxe Edition, which is that's kind of crazy. I think if they do a Classic Deluxe Edition, you know what I think that they should do? They should just have it for Shadowlands. Like if you buy the Deluxe Edition for Classic, you get Shadowlands. Mm. I think that'd be a good idea. You mean personally. you get the actual game Shadowlands? Yeah, yeah, you get the oh, game. Okay. The reason is because. There's going to be a lot of people who are going to play TBC or play Classic and be like, I, I don't want to play this, right? I thought yeah, I had yeah. the time. And if they could just right go to Shadowlands, you, you still retain that player. You, you I don't know why they didn't do that with Classic. Like, remember, remember I was telling you about that? Yeah, well, and you saw it both ways. There, yeah. There's a lot of people that I know that have started playing WoW for the first time through, you know, finding my stream. I stream a lot of variety and stuff now. Yep. So people find my stream variety and they're like, oh, I'll try out WoW. That's fan, it's fan. seems like this game a lot, whatever. So they try it out and they, they might start playing Classic for the first time. And they're like, this is a cool game, but Classic isn't really for me. I'll go try Retail. And then they end up playing Retail. I've also had yeah. it the yeah. other way around at Shadowlands launch. I had people try out Shadowlands and then end up moving to Classic. Uh, mm -hmm. A bunch of people in, in my Retail Guild that I made uh, ended up doing that. And they just they, they, I, now they're playing Classic because yeah. some people end up, you, you always find there, there are two different versions of the game and this weird, cringy, like, Ah, like classic this, retail that. Like it's it's so dumb. Like you can enjoy both. You can enjoy one. It doesn't matter. You can enjoy neither, right? There's plenty of people that enjoy neither too. Yeah, a lot of people play both. Like a lot of people have that sort of social, casual experience in classic, and then if they yeah. want to do hardcore, you know, mechanically challenging gameplay, they they go and play Shadowlands. Yeah, like the whole like classic Andy mentality or the retail Andy mentality. It's it's dumb, right? Whenever people. Yeah, simple right i mean i i like playing both versions of the game i think that if you try to continuously pit them up against each other or whatever I, it's just like why 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 do that and the both of the versions of the game the truth is both versions of the game are good yeah. like retail wow is fun in a lot of ways it has great things to do like if you like doing mount runs and farming and stuff like that that's super cool and there are other people who you know, they like playing Classic WoW. They think that's super fun. They like yeah. leveling and the community of it, and they can do that. And I think the best thing about a WoW sub is that you get to do both whenever you want. Right. That's awesome. I love. I, I still love that they did that. Right. That it's a shared sub. Yeah. The sub. Smart. The sub hasn't increased in. Pr of all the weird, like money grabby things that Blizzard and Activision, whatever, seems to do, though it's kind of odd. But they they haven't increased their sub price in 15 years. Which is good. Yeah, I mean, I'm all about they're making it. that money in, in other ways. Yeah, they make the money in other ways, absolutely. <laughs> but yeah. uh, it is nice, at least, that they didn't increase the sub fee because that's like, yeah, that, that's like a whole other can of worms. I, I'm kind of out of the loop, so I played Shadowlands like a lot for the first six weeks or so, and then I I was like, you know, I just personally I like Classic more, so I kind of went back. But it's weird that's because weird with uh, Battle for Azeroth too, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and yeah. it's weird because I look at Shadowlands and I'm like, there's nothing even wrong here. Like, I think this is a good game. It's just I yeah. personally like Classic more. And so that's what I do. So I'm like, I love Retail. Generally, yeah, like how, how are people receiving it now after five, four or five months of it coming out? Like, are people enjoying so, Shadowlands? I watched the Bellier video about this and it said that the numbers went down by 41%. Okay. So that's, uh, that's insanely good. good retention, actually, for an MMO. Uh, it said it said it was the same as the other expansions which i'm not really too surprised about i think shadowlands what what blizzard should hope to do is make the expansion grow over time 
and not just have this massive boom and expect to keep them, but retain players after that initial boom is wearing off and just build up slowly. Well, that that's ideal, right? But uh, I, I think WoW is such a big name game at this point that you're always going to have a yeah. boom. And uh, the hope has got to be that when you when you have this, the, the end of this has a tail, right? Where you go boom, right? Yeah. Go boom like this. And then all of a sudden, hopefully it starts going up. Uh, mm -hmm. slowly after that and if that's happening then then that's a that's very good for the expansion that is a that is a successful think, expansion in my opinion because you're always going to have this at, at this point i think wow is one of those games where it's like people have these memories of playing when you're 13 14 15 and a new expansion comes out and you want to have like you're so desperate to have that tingling magical feeling of playing a new wow expansion again yeah it, it, it's never ever going to live up to your to your expectation so people come back, they want to feel it, and then they, yeah, they they leave after a month or two a lot of the time. Yeah, I could see that. I think that's definitely true. Uh, people just, yeah, they want to they want to have that experience that they had before, and it's really not there anymore, but every single two years, you're willing to put down 40 bucks to try and make sure. Yeah, right. Yeah. I think that's the reality. I mean, I, so, was, I was out of it for a while, and then I ended up coming back. Uh, yeah. I mean, but I'll tell you what, you know, what brought me back to retail was whenever streaming. I started playing and streaming on private servers and, and doing yeah. all that. And then eventually I came back to retail. Otherwise I was done. And I think there's a lot of people who played classic and then they eventually slowly came back to retail because of that. I think, I think outside of streaming, I still would have done that with Shadowlands. I, and I, I've said it a hundred times. Shadowlands is the most fun that I personally had in retail since Burning Crusade. And I, that, I quit at the beginning of Wrath, right? So I didn't experience that, and I do regret it. I wish I had done the Wrath raids, and a lot of people from, like, a story and lore and, and doing those dungeons and raids and everything, like, I, I understand why that was so good and why so many people enjoyed that. It just wasn't for me anymore I, at the time. My opinion is I think that Shadowlands PvP is the best PvP that we've had since Cataclysm. And yes, I think that it's better than Mr. Pandaria because Mr. Pandaria was way too bloated. I genuinely think it's the best PvP it's, that it's we've had so since fun. Cataclysm. It is. I I haven't gotten my glad wins yet, but I got I got twenty four hundred like two maybe a little over two months ago. But yeah, I need to. Uh, I still need to get my glad wins and stuff. But it's it's I'll, so I'll fun. Say, I want to say that this is spoken as a warrior who people do think are overpowered right now. But I, I could ask the question: what? Why? How could, be, how, could, how could warrior be overpowered if only thirty one percent of people play it? Well, well, here here's my question. Why, like, why do you guys think it's weird that the guy who plays a rep pal and the guy who plays a warrior like Shadowlands PvP? How, how in the world could that possibly be yeah. the case? You know, like, why, why do you guys yeah, think I mean, that's weird? If it was that good, I mean, it would be like, <laughs> it'd be that good. Everybody play would be a hundred percent, dude. Yeah, I, mean, I gotta on. say, like, uh, one thing that turns me off from Shadowlands, I hate Warlock and Shadowlands. It's too many buttons. Like, I miss, you know, I think every class should be one button. You just spam that one button. Yeah. And then, so you're, and then excited, you're really excited for TBC then? Oh, TBC Warlock is going to be great. <laughs> it's just too many, too many freaking buttons in retail, yeah. man. Yeah, that's ah, kind man. of the way I feel about it. I mean, I don't know, like Warlock. I <laughs> liked all the buttons with Warlock, actually. Uh, maybe not in Shadowlands. I haven't really played it a lot in Shadowlands, but I remember playing Warlock and Legion. It was so good. Yeah, like Legion. I, I do think Legion PVE yeah. was better than Shadowlands. Legion PVE, I think, was better than any PVE that we've had since Mr. Pandaria. I, I remember coming back in Legion and fighting as Warlocks and just remember seeing the Warlocks had this and Death Knights had this. Just this the yeah. the army of, of minions and just covering my oh, whole screen. I was so mad. I was like, get like get this crap off my screen. I'm so glad they yeah. I feel like the game in general was bloated for years and they really have done a good job of getting away from that in Shadowlands. I I, I don't know. I personally I like I don't know. I a think lot. That especially, yeah, comparatively to comparatively. where, yeah, comparatively to where things were at with like BFA in the same life cycle, uh, Legion in the same life cycle. I feel like Shadowlands is in a really good place, and probably by the time BC releases, after BC is over, a lot of people will maybe be a little bit excited to go back to Shadowlands, play a little bit of that mm -hmm. too, and catch just, up with that because you're going to have way more content then. There's just the problem with Shadowlands right now is there's just too many too many grinds too many things you've got to do like for cosmetic stuff and and everything and maybe that's okay maybe it doesn't matter but i feel like there's no real thing that you work towards that has a stretch goal that doesn't just feel arbitrary well uh um, this might be an, an unpopular opinion i feel like when people reminisce about legion they're remembering the very end and the start of for me the start of legion was like I was gonna talk about it this. was really bad but then it was balling at the end 
Well, what but happened? So, so if, you, if you compare Shadowlands to Legion, so like you know, patch, me, uh, patch. Well, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna that. say. Oh, well, go ahead. You, you go. No, it's it's your show. Go. Well, well, I was gonna I was gonna kind of double up on on what Stay Safe was saying. Uh, Legion did have a very bad uh, first impression on a lot of people, right? Because you're, you're yeah. like you're not the only one who, who's saying that. Stay Safe. A lot of people are saying that in chat too, where it's like, oh, people shit on Legion whenever it was out, and now people talk about how much they love it. Well, they did the same thing for Mists, right? These, these are WoW players. They're always going to do that. That's one. Yeah. But two is, uh, whenever Legion first came out, they had a lot of issues. There was issues with the legendary system and so bad. The, the the and the the weapon power. What was it? Artifact the artifact power. power. Like people yeah. had a lot of problems with these things. Now, by the end of Legion, they addressed a lot of this stuff. Like they they added a currency to where you could actually buy the, the legendary weapon or the legendary items, and uh, it was really good. There's certain things that I just don't like from a. a design standpoint like i did not like artifact weapons at all because i think the most exciting thing that you can get in wow is a weapon anytime like a, a you get a yeah. new weapon drop you get a They're badass really, like, two-hander not, and yeah they weren't really relics were really underwhelming right so, so yeah. asman go ahead and, and say what you want to say i wanted to say that i remember whenever i would raid in nighthold i would genuinely get depressed by raiding in nighthold because of how good my character was because i knew it couldn't be like this forever Mm -hmm. I remember I would be topping the damage meter with this perfectly smooth, really clean, great rotation that's just so well designed with this tier set bonus that makes it even better to play with these legendaries that are just incredible that maximize my damage even more. And every single raid that I would do, I would think to myself, oh, man, it's not going to last forever. That's like yeah. uh, Warriors right now in Classic going into TBC. I... Yes. And they're all re-rolling Warlock. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's uh, Warlock is going to be really, really strong in, in TBC. Um, Hunter is going to be really strong in TBC. It's going to be yeah. interesting. It's going to be very interesting to see how, how, how it all plays out because we, we have this memory and, and we played the game a certain way back then and people are going to find out new things. And it, it might end up being very, very different. It's going to be super different. Like, I remember even playing vanilla private servers, like, five or six years ago. And the, the meta then is so different than how far people min-max and the meta now in Classic. Like, mm -hmm. it's it's shifted. And that's not because of changes between private servers and Classic. It's just, like, people know more and, and play differently and spec differently and use different consumes and different... It's So, I guarantee, just because people are playing TBC private servers now a certain way or because they played TBC back in the day, 15 years ago a certain way, it's going to be totally new. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be shaken up. I, I can almost guarantee it. Yeah, yeah. I, I can pretty much expect that too. I don't know. Uh, I, I just see, I see people in my chat. They're talking about only 10k, and these guys can't even. They, they haven't even traded me a thousand gold yet. They haven't even given yeah, me a thousand. Yeah, what the thousand. heck, dude? Unbelievable. Like, only 10k gold. Have, how, dude, yeah, how do you I'm collect like, 10,000 gold? gold? You barely even play anymore. You serious? Yeah, dude. Actually, that yeah. makes sense. That's probably why you have. <laughs> that's probably well, why you have get gold. Well, I uh, and yeah, every time I log on, I just collect gold and I log off. Yeah. I also have flasks and everything. I'm prepared for like three raids. You know, you know what else uh, we should be prepared for is uh, TBC beta, and uh, that is almost yeah. guaranteed to drop today because I just got the install for it. Oh, no did you? Way. I just got the install for it, so it is okay. up for me. Uh, yeah, it's up for me right now. Uh, I'm installing right now. Mine. Restart your battle net, and yeah. um, let's get this going. And this is a good time for us okay. to stop with Classic Cast, guys. Starting. Thank you so much for joining us today for Classic Cast. It has been an absolute blast getting the show started again. We I have the install too, dude. <gasps> you're here. Asman's gonna get it. It's gonna be great. Ooh. Asman, I will go ahead and wrap this up. We'll get this All installed. Right, we'll get grouped up, and we'll get yep. going. And we're gonna start this. All right, guys. It's going to be great. Um, I'll see you later. Yeah, we'll see you soon. Yeah, thank hey, you, guys. Asma, thank was, you for joining was, us. Uh, pleasure talking to you, man. And uh, great class guest. Awesome. Absolutely. Right, thank you guys so much. We'll see you guys later. Stay Safe is also going live very, very soon, if not right now. Make sure to go watch Stay Safe TV as well. And uh, yep, I'm going to take a quick break while we install, and I will be right back. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you guys soon.